Yo, 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 what is up, beautiful people? Happy Friday to everyone. Couldn't be a moment too soon. Uh, hello. Um, what is up? Uh, welcome to How to Trade a little bit, uh, bit befuddled. That's the word I'm looking for. We already have some people ready there in the chat. Stefan Knights, whatever, man. I don't know. Uh, Matthew Booth, Bears versus Bulls. We got Chantel Street, Ace Ventura, Andrew Chow. Hello to you as well. Uh, we hope everybody has an awesome Friday coming up. We'll wait for everyone to come on over from the other stream, and then we'll start shouting everybody out. There we go. Now they're coming in. Jeremy Newman, Bob Dub, Delov, Mateus Lane, Easy Trader, Draco, Zach Griffith, JC Finance, Charon J. We got Hamster. We got Michael Lloyd, Britt Benden, Stupid Bitcoin, Fiddleback, as well as Martin Currency. We got Derek Thompson, Ronaldo, Pillsbury, All Tank, Paul Goodson, Sixto V, and then we got Derek B as well. A shout out to the OGs in the chat, Ryan Fatfiga, and our friend Elon Musk. Good morning, Adair. Good morning. How are you? I can't complain. Everything's good. How about yourself? I am good. Yeah, I'm just, just living life. It is a Friday. And Dude. right now I'm in this little NVIDIA short, so, or NVDL, sorry. So just taking kind of a shorting the, the pop type appeal. If we break above this 20 area, I'm getting out of here. The plan is to take minimum... Uh, 20 cents, if we can get back down to 80s, I'm okay there. If we drop a little further, I'll be aiming for, for 60s or 20s. Now, I don't have a large enough position to scalp this out because I'm still getting used to having adding more size, being comfortable adding more size, I should say, as I, as I venture into live trading. But I'm happy with the trade right now. I'm happy with the risk management uh, parameters that I've set up. So we're just going to let NVDL go to the downside. Yes, How ma'am. I see triangles. That looks nice. Yeah, we're trading NVFY. We'll cover the small caps uh, shortly. But for the moment, let's start the lesson du jour and get those wheels going there, baby. Uh, last day of small cap trading today. We're going to talk more about the emotional side. We already covered all the other trades. We're going to talk about FOMO. Fade the FOMO, baby. Uh, so today's lesson tackles the ever-present danger zone, FOMO, or, well, the, the, um, the short version is FOMO. It obviously stands for fear of missing out. This emotional roller coaster can be especially tempting in the fast-paced world of small caps, no doubt. Um, here's how to stay cool, collected, and potentially avoid costly mistakes. So as we typically do, we'll just define some of these basic uh, terminologies for our new viewers out there. FOMO is essentially a psychological phenomenon where you fear missing out on a profitable opportunity. You see a stock skyrocketing and you feel pressured to jump in, uh, ignoring your trading plan and potentially entering a risky trade. Stick to the plan, they say, right? So that's essentially what we're talking about here. Having a plan and not sticking to it as a result of some emotional manifestations. The dangers of FOMO are, are multiples, but we'll get to some just uh, basic ones here. FOMO-driven trades can be absolutely disastrous. You might end up buying at inflated prices just before a correction comes in fast and furious, or you chase a stock that's already past its peak, uh, been there, done that. Remember, emotions cloud judgment. All small cap stocks can be particularly volatile. And this always takes me back to that area or that part of, um, I believe, Godfather 1 or 2. I can't remember what it was, which, which uh, series, uh, uh, which uh, movie in the series it was, but it was basically Michael Corleone basically talking about his brother, Sonny Corleone, and how he thought he was a bad Don, uh, not because he, was, he lacked intelligence or anything, but because his emotions clouded his judgment. He just got too angry, and he always wanted revenge rather than trying to see the bigger picture. I guess that's really what comes to my mind here. So your emotions cloud judgment, and here's a, a visual manifestation of that, right? So you have your, your FOMO time. Thank you for throwing this in, Adara. You have extreme positive sen sentiment at the high risk. You're feeling great. Great. All of a sudden, mm -mm, the stock coming starts coming down, and then you find yourself in that state of denial. No, 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 no. It'll go back up. Uh, you know, it's just a quick correction, and it doesn't go back up, and it keeps going down and down and down. And then the denial turns into panic, and uh, you start really getting emotional here. This is when the emotion starts picking up. You start seeing doom time. 
panic turns into depression, and then the cycle starts again. You see, uh, you get over it, you see another good looking stock, and you follow that same cycle, starting with a FOMO time, feeling great, maybe a couple of pennies in the money, and then all of a sudden you find yourself in that precarious positions again. So try to keep uh, that in mind when you are trading. So how do you fade the FOMO? So here are some strategies to combat the fear of missing out and make rational trading decisions. First things first, discipline, absolutely key here. Stick to your predefined trading plan, have a clear entry and exit points. I'm talking about where you're gonna get in, where your stop loss is, and where your profit taker are. You always have to have those three ready before you punch long or short. And they should be based on technical analysis, not emotions. Uh, I'm, I'm enough in the money. 50 pennies is enough for me. No, well, where is the technicals telling you to get out, right? Wait for confirmation as well. Another key strategy here. Don't chase the stock that's already on a tear. Uh, look for pullbacks or areas of consolidation um, or consolid consolidation phases, I should say, after strong price moves before entering a trade. And last but not least, Focus on value. This is more for the long-term minded investors rather than swing or day traders. Uh, obviously this requires uh, an element of fundamental analysis and not all of us are obviously equipped to do that. So if you are, good for you. Uh, developing a FOMO resistant mindset. So this is kind of where we get to the crux of the matter here. So building a strong trading mindset can help you resist FOMO. First things first, know your limits, right? Set clear risk tolerance levels and stick to them. As you would advise yourself to stick to your trading plan, stick to this as well when it comes to your limits. Don't invest more than you can afford to lose. So a couple of things I just wanted to chime in here. Obviously we're on a trading floor, so we have a daily shutdown. We also have individuals higher up to account to. So it's not like us trading at home where we can kind of blow up on our entire account without, without no one to account to. And also, don't invest more than you can afford to lose. I, I, I've used this example before, but I've had friends message me and be like, hey, you know, should I take out a second mortgage on this? Or should I pull out cre a credit card money to invest in that? And my answer to them is always no. Uh, you should only be investing what you can afford to lose. And so it has to be disposable income. And focus on the long term as well. Another really important point here, don't get caught up in the day-to-day -day noise, you know, a lot of people printing, you start uh, feeling bad about yourself, develop a long-term strategy and stay quiet about it. Nobody really needs to know what you're investing in. You know, you, you make the mistake of telling individuals and, you know, they kind of sometimes throw it back in your face. So stay quiet about what you're doing. You don't have to let everybody know what you're investing in. Look at the long term, forget about what everybody else is doing and learn from your mistakes. We all make them. Analyze your past er, uh, times where you had a bunch of FOMO and you took FOMO trades um, and understand what triggers you. You always hear about things being, uh, individuals being triggered and that kind of stuff, but what actually triggers you to make those mistakes when you're trading? And just really learn about yourself, I guess, really what I'm trying to tell you here. And uh, develop coping mechanisms when something's against you, but it hasn't really hit your stop yet, so you can't get out of the trade or you shouldn't get out of the trade but yet you're feeling that bad emotion, you're gonna have to figure coping mechanisms to help you deal with that. So everybody's gonna be a little bit different in this regard. So just kind of experiment, see what works with you. And this is part of the whole learning process, learning to trade. So, so much psychology involved in day trading or trading in general. And consider the risks, right? It's easy to be swept up in the rallies that often accompany small cap stocks, but make sure to remember some of the inherent risks like halts, ram ram, price swings, et cetera, involved in trading small cap stocks, right? So we know that these small cap gappers, they're around for a good time, they're not around for a long time, so make sure that your trading plan takes kind of that adage into consideration, right? And here are some additional tips for you guys. Take breaks, step away from the charts periodically to clear your head and avoid getting overwhelmed by market movements. Hello there. <laughs> I like that. I like that outfit. Yeah, I do. I do. It's the very fit. ominous. Oh, ominous. <laughs> uh, he's, check out the walk and talk coming up possibly here, guys, on the Katina Man's Instagram account. If you follow him, there could be a walk and talk coming very soon. Uh, so take breaks. Like I said, step away from the charts periodically. Clear your head. Do a walk and talk like Sean just is about to do. Um, 
and talk it out. That's part of the other uh, great feature of working on a trading floor here is you get to bounce ideas off so many different minds, all of which are involved in trading. So it's not like you're talking to your friends about it who have no experience trading whatsoever. That's the beauty about being on the trading floor here. Now, if you're at home, you may want to uh, chime in with individuals in the chat. You may want to cho um, join a Discord group, whatever it is. Try to have like-minded individuals, either physically or virtually, and bounce ideas off them, see what they think. And practice makes perfect. Paper trading also allows you to experiment with different strategies. Are you a breakout trader? Are you a mean reversion trader? Are you a momentum trader? Are you a range trader? Who are you, right? It also helps you hone your skill in what essentially is a risk-free environment because you are using fake money. And put things into perspective. I mean, really help uh, try to wrap your mind around uh, what you're doing. If you miss a big move, try to put aside your FOMO and consider the potential joy of uh, joys of missing out, I like that. Jomo, you may have missed out on a profit opportunity, but also avoid potential reversal, possibly a halt or another pitfall that could occur when you rush into a small cap trade. Been there, done that. And remember, FOMO is our natural human emotion, but it doesn't have to control your trading decisions. By developing discipline and a strong mindset and utilizing the tips that we just gave you, you can trade, you can fade the FOMO. And I love how this is uh, it's structured and make some rational choices in the exciting yet challenging world of small cap momentum trading, Adara. Yeah, so I, I think too, shout out to Jomo. That came from a, um, a poll that Fabian and Ramin once did, FOMO or Jomo. And so the joy of missing out, why I want to say that as well as I, I don't have a lot of, of a small cap experience, but I talk about this a lot when I was in the sim. I traded a little small cap by the name of Axla. Ah. And I, this was my first day trading. I was like, I think it was maybe even my first trade. And I saw it moving up and I was like, oh, I want to get involved. I want all the smoke. I get involved, small, small size, mind you. And I, that's probably why I didn't get stopped out with this. But then it halts about a dollar to the downside. And it's like, Adara, the movement had already happened. Right. You just got in because everybody else was involved. I had no level. I can tell you confidently I had no levels. I had no idea what I wanted out of the trade. And so it just didn't end up working out. So obviously that's kind of a lower stakes example. But, but I think it does speak to A, why it's important to try things out in the sim. And B, you know, FOMO is not all it's cracked up to be. And I just wanted to kind of say that. Also, I, I like thinking of the long-term element on there too. Because I know with, with some of these small caps, like uh, Rail Vision, I remember RVSN, that was moving up for like quite a few days. Yes. And I know some people were mentioning, you know, long term potential for that. And then unfortunately did kind of go back to yeah. being a, yeah. a small cap, right? Which is really hard. And I think that's why I appreciate that with, especially in regards to small cap that you mentioned yeah. long term. As well, well said. Well said. Um, great additions, uh, commentary there. Let's get to some small caps because, well, we're talking about small caps all week. So the one that I traded today was NVFY, but it is since uh, become untradeable. We'll see if this one becomes tradable in a minute. Now, the only thing that this one didn't have on my checklist was a definable pre-market high. Kind of didn't do anything in the pre-market. The first print where there was any discernible price action or any discernible volume was right at 930. So I had no level off which to basis. But what I did have was the fact that it was dipping into the volume weighted average price and that it had been respecting the volume weighted average price since the bell. So what I did was I took a little bit of a dip trade there off 346, rewrote this about 30 pennies uh, into the high 60s, low 70s there. But now it has become untradeable because VWAP on my chart is at three and a third and now it's doing the dance here at three and a fifth below three and a quarter. It did hold up here at the 20 period. The 20 period is the yellow solid line on my chart. 313, it's doing 319 right now. Still not tradable for me, but I, I'd like to see what it does at three bucks. You know, I don't typically like the whole dollar level all that much if it's below VWAP. Like you're not gonna see me take a dip off three, but I wanna see if this holds up maybe and retakes the volume weighted average price. Now, we had, uh, I don't remember which one it was, but we had a small cap gapper yesterday that broke decidedly below VWAP, but then somehow reclaimed it later in the afternoon. The other small, uh, by the way, NVFY up 52% was way more at the highs. The other one that's going on right now, INDO. This is a continuation play. This has been in play for a few days and it's back again today. Definable pre-market high, above VWAP, above, uh, or sorry, above VWAP and above uh, the pre-market high. So the pre-market high there we could see was right at 4 a.m. It got into four and three quarters and we didn't touch four and three quarters till after the bell. So that's the level I have off which to work. 
INDO is an Indonesian energy company. Just don't forget that, okay, because it features later. So 475 was the pre-market high. We broke above that. We were wicking below the volume weighted average price for a while, but we did hold four and a half generally. Now we're really making a move here into five and a half. We just printed high a day, 545, up 31 and two thirds percent. Again, look for something more retracement like on this rather than trying to chase it at these levels. Personally, I like that five level. Number one, it's the whole dollar. It's above VWAP by almost like 10 pennies, which gives me a bit of room between the entry and uh, the stop, so I can put my stop below VWAP. And also it had trouble with five at 940. And then again at 945 and 950, and you guessed it, 955 wasn't able to break that $5 level. So we know that that's a level of resistance. Let's see if it comes back after clearing it by some distance and uses it as support. We'll have to wait and see. So $5 is an interesting level on me for INDO, so much so that I'm gonna put my uh, alert at, let, let's just put 507, because seven's a lucky number. We'll see what we get there. Wisa was also on the board. It's kind of V-shaped retracement right there off eight bucks and now at six and two thirds below VWAP, not tradable for me, but keep your eye on it. And Donald John Trump, it's been in the headlines for I don't know how many days now after that big retracement. Three days positive now, DJT, as it knocks on the door of 37 and a half. Technically the high of the day is 37.19, but as you can see in the pre, it was a little bit higher than that got to about 37 and a half or thereabouts. Anyway, the closing print on DJT yesterday was 33 and a fifth. And it just, you know, it broke it, double bottom right there ever so briefly, right back up it goes. But again, this one having trouble reclaiming the volume with it at average price, which on my chart is 35 bucks. So we'll keep an eye on DJT as well. And then I had, uh, I had another one here, RWAD, but this one is, it's done. So at least for now, it doesn't look like it's tradable. So we'll keep eyes on some of these small caps today. Yeah, our one got really chop and churn. And honestly, I might need to look at that because if there is a, a range, okay. someone might like be interested. It. And it would be me. Um, right now, I am in two trades. I am long IBIT. Uh, right now, we're basically exactly at my point of entry. I like this because, so initially, I was actually going to try to cancel this order uh, because I looked again at Bitcoin, and I was like, I don't know. And then also here, IBIT's right below VWAP. But then I was like, Adara, we're still seeing this uptrend. Higher highs, higher lows. I want to wait and see what happens here. If we kind of break in here, I'm going to this about 10 pennies. I'm going to have to cut it loose. But I'm happy with this trade right now. We're trying to get at least 37. So I want about 17 cents, which for me is, a, I think, a decent size. I also want to talk about this SoFi short. Uh, shout out to Caliber for pointing this one out to me yesterday and then again today. And the thing is too, because uh, he was pointing out the double top, but I think you always have to have your own reason for entering the trade. For me, my reason I like this trade beyond, um, and again, thank you to Kyle for pointing this out, is because 724 was one of the huge levels I was watching yesterday. That's actually where I ended up leaving my short. Because look at the 724. This, to me, was a, a kind of a chop and churn area that we had that I did want to have my eye on. And so then when you see that 724 rejection, what, and we've been spending quite some time knocking at the door in 725, and so far we'll open it and then shut it Jerome Powell style yet again so it has been a little bit of a bamboozling kind of trade here my eye bit oh that's nvdl i'm getting confused here because they're almost the same amount so i'm gonna have to switch my side charts that i know what i'm looking at um kind of coming down here but actually with nvdl in mind i do want to mention uh this nvidia trade because i was really proud of what i did with this so i was saying th this was kind of one thing i was noticing yesterday is i've talked about this a lot uh with it regards to nvidia when i was trading nvidia in the sim with when I don't scalp at NVIDIA, bad things happen, for me at least, right? Other people can totally do the hold style, and it's just not something I'm really comfortable with. So I, like, and I said this as well with this NVDL trade. I said, we're going to watch and see what we do, and if we kind of break here, uh, it, depending on what we do around the 70s, I want to take at least 80s, but I'm going to watch 70s, 60s, et cetera, see how we do. When I noticed that we were struggling a little bit here at, at 70s, I decided to get out, and then I'm happy we did because I, I got out there because then we popped back up. Now we're falling a little bit lower in NVDL. I probably should have taken that range short again at 34s, but I didn't. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. That's okay, right? I'm not going to FOMO into this. If we see other ranges I like, I'm going to get involved. I bit getting a bit dicey here for me, <laughs> and I bit uh, we're, yeah, we're going to wait. We got a couple pennies here. I want to see us bounce. If we don't bounce, I am bouncing out of the trade. But SoFi, I'm happy with SoFi coming down to the downside Ow. a little bit. Also, I'm really proud of what I did with SoFi. I have enough for four beak wetters here. I have two of them set. 
The other two, I, I'm kind of interested to see what we do at 14s and then maybe save about 12s, but I, I am proud that I gave myself enough shares to, to kind of run around a little bit. And I'm only, also I didn't mention what my risk management was for this. We're risking about into 26s. So we're risking about four pennies. I'm trying to get minimum, I think four. So I'm okay with that risk to reward, especially because that'll be about a quarter of the position. So uh, enough yapping for me. Um, those are my trades and I'm happy with how the day's going so Sounds far. It's been a fun good. week. How are you? Sounds good. We just uh, saw Neil in the chat say Tesla was back at VWAP. So we got long TSLL for that VWAP hold. Tesla's been putting in higher lows. I mean, let's be real about it. The Cybertruck may be out of control here with the, with the accelerator uh, being <laughs> stuck and lodged. But uh, the fact of the matter is, since that low that we put in, uh, let's see, what was that, 715? We made the low there at 145 and a quarter. It's been higher highs and higher lows. That could come in and change at any moment. Like we don't have to stick to that. But uh, yeah, these uh, higher lows and higher highs have, have been quite telling. So we'll see what we get there. Now the other thing, Apple back at 165. So another possible range dip trade here on AAPL, but let's be real about it. Apple really hasn't respected 165 to the T. The low on the day on Apple is 164.82. So it's shown its propensity to break the whole dollar level uh, by more than a couple of shekels, to be quite honest with you. So uh, AAPL presenting you opportunities with what that 165. Now that 165 is supposed to be a key level of support. I mean, when you look back, it's 165, right Neil, on the daily? 165 on Apple is the daily. Let's have a look. Why, why ask? Let's just look. It's just under 66. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Because I remember being 200, 165. Yeah, so it is, it is 165 over here. That takes us all the way back into the trough that we put in uh, last fall. So October 2023, we got into 165.22. So these are October lows that we're back to on AAPL. And we danced with uh, that level as well in September, just a little bit higher though. Neil saying that there's a short seller report coming in on S bucks. So anybody interested on S bucks will have a look there as it's doing things. Let's go ahead and have a look over here on the blotter, SBUX. And I, I didn't take any profits there, sadly, on, um, on TSLL. Let's go ahead and set up a profit taker up here, and we'll see what we get. Um, so S bucks, one second. SBUX. Let's find out. Oppenheimer reiterates perform. Uh, I don't see anything either. No, I'm not on busy. I'm on my platform, but I don't see any. I, I see a whole bunch of uh, analyst entries uh, from six till 11. Do you see anything there on s -Buck? I have my Benzinga. I'm not seeing anything right there for, okay. for Starbucks um, popping up. Yeah, Oppenheimer, same thing that Neil said. Same thing though, okay. Yeah, I'm not seeing it either. So we'll keep eyes on that. I'll keep eyes on uh, Apple at 165 as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Apple, Apple at 165, remember that 175, you had that great range on that on Monday, mm -hmm. I think. So it's crazy that we're talking about like a $10 difference in Apple. I mean, Apple has been feeling a little bit of the heat, a bit more of an Apple crisp right now. <laughs> um, getting a little, not an Apple fritter like how Neil likes, it's a little bit more of crispy, <laughs> kind of getting burned by these markets just as ghost. But right now this eye bit, I, I'm okay with it right now. I, I like look at how well we held the 75s. So I was gonna give it to 73s, and I bet's like you don't even have to worry about that, girl. Also, SoFi, uh, we're we're getting out of SoFi. Uh, I'm okay. A little bit of an L. It's exactly as planned. So as long as you execute the trade how you plan to execute it, I'm okay with that. My one thing that I am trying to that I've noticed myself falling into a little bit is um, is trying trading too much with my PNL. So I'm trying to be not doing that right if i like a setup i want to be able to take the setup and it i had that that nvdl trade i was really proud of earlier today but i don't want to like you know stop trading at all just because i'm happy with what we did here right i'm gonna absolutely be watching the 60 uh 3360 on nvdl and on nvda it's gonna be uh it's a little less of an even number about about 819 here actually because look at this we had this beautiful little doji earlier then we dipped down a little bit look where we are resting we're resting our feet here at 819. To me, this could be an interesting little level. I wanna see what we do. If we continue to reject off, okay, it's probably too late. I think it's gonna be a short. As I'm yakking, it makes up its mind. That's okay, I hadn't made up my mind yet, so I didn't wanna rush into that trade. 
Um, yeah, no, no worries, Kyle Burdett. I took it. I took it on my own impetus. We lost a couple cents there, and I always appreciate everybody's, um, you know, input because it does it does help you kind of have the basis for your trade. And honestly, my thing with SoFi, as I was kind of mentioning earlier too, I really did like. Um, the fact that we were having this this issue getting above this level that was so spicy earlier. So, yeah, it's okay. Nice. Didn't work out. Where's the next trade? Uh, I bet if you want to make up your mind, I would greatly appreciate it. All right. There you go. Um, shout out. Um, all right, we wet our beak on some profits there on AAPL as it holds 165 uh, at like a nice little 10 penny winner. We're printing nicely here on TSLL. Uh, on that, so shout out to Neil for calling out that VWAP dip on TSLA as uh, we're nicely in the money on this bad boy. Wet our beak on some profits there. Uh, now it's looking to break through the 580 level. So we'll see if we can make it up at least into maybe 583 or thereabouts. Um, I don't really have any other trades, but I see Anurag asking, can you please look at ARM, flat bottom break, gap fill? Sure, let's have a look at uh, ARM. Obviously, ARM had a very tough last few days to be quite honest with you and uh yeah it's not not looking much better today okay so i'm going to include the pre-market action on this just because uh we need to be able to see it there there we go okay so now we got the pre-market action on this bad boy and as you can see the closing print on arm yesterday was essentially 105. we gapped down quite aggressively into 102 and a half that's just at 4 a.m we hold that as a top for quite a bit. That is until the bell comes in and then down goes arm, <laughs> right? And the thing is, I sat down today and I mentioned it to Katina, man. I'm like, $100 on arm. He looked over to me and he says, okay, what are you gonna do about it? And I'm like, I'm not gonna do anything about it. I'm not gonna trade arm. I don't trade arm well. And I think he asked me that because he kind of knew that it was gonna go red. And more right, he could not be. It already dropped $5 since you know the top. It's $8 from the high. So tough look on arm. Uh, Anurag was saying what? Flat bottom break with the gap? Gap to fill? I, what are you talking about? Let's go to the four hours, see what you're talking about here. I'm, oh, I see. So you're talking about this gap um, from the earnings. And that takes us back to February 8th when this thing st starts skyrocketing. So where are you, what level are you looking at, Anurag? 80 bucks? Because that's where I see the gap fill there. The high of the range prior to that earnings breakout was 80 bucks. So we're at 95.60 LOD today. So that's $15. That could be an interesting gap fill on a swing, Anurag. Good look for you there. Um, I don't know if we gap fill this. I mean, obviously, there is the adage of all gaps get filled. And whether you believe that or not, a different story. I should probably tell you a couple of things though with respect to this bad boy over here. Look where we are on the RSI. We are really depressed, really in oversold territory here on the four hour. So this is interesting. I mean, and doesn't mean just because we are at the low area of oversold that we're gonna get bought up. I mean, we could really actually fill that gap. Good luck there, Anurag. I didn't even notice that. Shout out to you, my man, for pointing that out. Yeah, I'm just getting out of this um, this I bid a little bit earlier than expected because my thing was I noticed we kept rejecting this 90 MA and I was like, Adara, if this sells off, it's Bitcoin. It's going to sell off with the viciousness. So I got out here, happy with it. Not a winning trade. We also did lose a little bit in that SoFi, but that's okay. Um, SoFi, so good. Not in that trade, but definitely in this market. So please just punch. And again, for nice. me, I think risk management is a really key part. Also, it looks like iBit might now decide to give up its its um, ongoing battle with the 90 MA and continue to the upside. That's okay. That's okay. One thing I did notice with regards to Bitcoin, although it's kind of not doing that necessarily right the second, is look at this little rangy area we have. That's what I should have been playing with iBit instead of what I did try to play, which was a higher, high, higher, low type look. If this range comes back into effect, effect, you can uh, bet your bottom dollar that I will be getting involved. Shout out to the musical Annie for some reason. But yeah, let's, let's see. Let's see what happens. Um, this this Tesla is looking like a nice little long. I like this. Um, oh, this is nice. Yeah, I don't have anything to get, where to get involved in this right now. But shout out to Sharif yeah. for uh, being in, in Stressel, Tesla, Vessel. And he's making sister. it the Vessel. Um, NVDL. See, I was talking about Okay, it didn't come in quite as I wanted. I wanted 60s on NVDL. We're at 53s, so I don't love that. However, if we can get another candle kind of holding up at this area, I will probably go long. And I say that because look at this little doji here. Look at how well we held this. And look at how much we're kind of stagnant at NVIDIA at this level. We even look, we even actually earlier on this little green candle, we bounce off of it. And then 
so I think I think this for whatever reason 60s is something with NVDL and that's going to be 819 on NVDA to, to translate uh, because yeah NVIDIA and its little sister do have a very much like Tesla and its little sister Tesla <laughs> NVIDIA and in, NVIDIA as I'll call it they do have a, there's a pretty strong correlation here so I want to see what we do this this 60s is going to be make it or break it for me and I don't know why I said make it or break it I will either go short or long I will be getting involved in some way also I bit winning the Oscar for most bamboozling trade I got out we struggled for for so long I got maybe this was a sign like Adara we didn't break below why did you get out so maybe this is something I can learn from that's okay we lost a couple pennies on that but I am you know you have to you have to be taking the trades you're comfortable with and in that case I was more comfortable getting out there it's all good Ready to see what else happens. It also looks like Bitcoin and iBit want to break its range, which is not, not fun for somebody who likes ranges, but you have to, you, you don't choose what the markets give you. You just have to take um, what you see. And right now, I think this NVIDIA is, is going to be, we're, we're going to get, we're going to do something here. I haven't decided what yet, but we're at my level I like. I like and something it. will be taking place. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's have a look at AAPL. Got stopped out for the last remaining amount there as it did break below that local area low, but right back up above 176, it, or sorry, 165. It goes on AAPL. Look, man, these markets are quite bamboozling. So let's, oh. uh, let's. Be, what's up? Sorry, no, I just, uh, my mic was doing. Yeah, I, I gotta tell you, you know what? I'm not gonna be looking long for uh, much longer here. I know these uh, levels are coming in. They're key levels, 165 on Apple. We kept talking about that, but I really feel like we are headed down. So uh, we're gonna be looking short. Now, what I, the other one that I really like here uh, is Microsoft. Now, we were taking a range trade on Microsoft in the 420s. Today, 400 held, but for how long? I mean, it didn't even hold exactly. We had this hammer candle show up. Uh, this is a mistake by me. I should have definitely known about this 400 level on Microsoft. In fact, I charted it to the high side for some reason, uh, looking for a possible rejection on a pop. I don't know why I was look thinking that way. I should have been looking for a possible bounce off that 400. That was quite obvious. But anyway, I think we may be coming in to this 400 again. Now, is this level better? than the level say on 165 on Apple. So questions to be asked uh, on that, but I definitely am gonna be looking at Softy if it makes its way into 400. So that's another interesting trade there for MSFT. Let's see what else we got going on. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Let's flip back to some of these small cappers. Anything going over here, INDO did come into that $5 level, um, but yeah, still not quite making its way down enough. Michael Moore, Michael Moore Biding. Sorry if I butchered your name. Sharif, can you do me a favor and look at NVIDIA time and sales? There has been a buyer who constantly spams 100 lots above the ask for hours on and Michael, you're probably not wrong. I'll have a look for you, but I don't think it's an individual actually sitting on their desk and doing that. That's typically an algo that's doing that kind of thing. So let's flip over here. Well, we'll do the NVDA. NVDA, here they go. So let's see, above the S. So you're saying that they're spamming 100 lots. Of, so over here, you'll be able to see the size. This is the time in sales. And so this will actually show you the share size itself. Whereas on here, you're gonna see the lot size. So right above the S, so we're 78, 75. Well, it's changing every second over here. To be honest with you, what I'm more interested in, Michael, are the ones that are printing ones the size where there's ones, because that's a liquidity algo, and that's searching out for liquidity to see what kind of response it gets. And that's, uh, you always see that on the Apple time and sales as well. So I'm not exactly sure what to make of this 100 level, uh, this 100 share level at the ask, to be honest with you, I haven't watched it enough. We'll do a little bit of watching, and then we'll see if I'm able to, uh, to see anything there for you. But for now, um, yeah, it's not really doing anything right now. Let's see, right above the ask. Yeah, a bit, a bit kind of tough to tell right now. Never mind, it stopped yesterday. It went for like three hours straight. Okay. Um, let's see what else is being asked here. Ivan, look at Tesla. Don't you see head and shoulders on the one minute? Let's have a look and see what Ivan is talking about. So Tesla, what I saw initially, Ivan, was higher highs and higher lows. So what I ended up seeing, so I see what you're seeing here. Uh, do, we, do you see a head and shoulders on the one minute? I don't see it on the one minute, Ivan, but what I do see is an upward channel, kind of. 
and uh, especially with all these lows being incrementally higher than the previous one. Now you're not getting that huge flat top break, but you are getting higher highs nonetheless. Uh, this is the IB high, 930, went right into pivot points at 151, exactly 150.94. But look at the subsequent highs, they're all higher than each other. So I don't know, I personally don't see a head and shoulders on the one minute, but if you see it, have at it, my man, and let me know how it goes. I was going to say, it also looks kind of upward trending to me because I like yeah. the first thing we were talking about this, we were both yeah. sitting down and like looking at Tesla. So I think it, it does have a bit of an upward movement there. I do think it could go zero to 100 to the upside. Real quick. Just the way, real quick, <laughs> shout out to Drake. That was that song was like 14-year-old Adara's jam. That was really? A, I at one point could probably rap the entire first part of that song. <laughs> um, I don't know if we still can, Hold but on. at one point I want to tell you something that Neil used to do Freestyle Fridays. I'm sure you've heard, heard of it. I heard about that. Wow, look. I mean, it's on the table, Adara. It's on the table. If you want to do it, hey. I'll have to consider that. <laughs> if I think of a song, I'll have to consider that. All right. But yeah, right now, this iBit range, still ranging. <laughs> I've not been able to get in. The timing on this has been very ill-fated. I'm really trying to, to kind of get involved at the top end, but I'm too late, bottom end too late. Also, I did miss my NVIDIA area. And this thing is too, I still like, to be clear, I still like the iBit range. I still like the NVDL trade off the 60, the 3.3. 3360, but you know, one thing too, I, I want to keep in mind is I still want to respect my levels. I like earlier as well that, that, you know, Sean and Neil were both kind of saying, if it doesn't come into a level, it just doesn't come into a level, right? And right. I think earlier I used to take, cause I know I really like how Sean will always say a scare trader is a deficient trader. And I think earlier in my brain, I used to think, oh, that means like you have to take something the second you see it. And it's like, no, no, it just means that if you see something you like, have the confidence to take it. But if I don't see anything I like, I don't want to force myself well into taking it. So that is why I am, I, I'm just kind of waiting for my levels to come in here. Sorry guys, I wish I was involved in something, but I do not want to. We're talking about FOMO today, so I think it would be a little bit hypocritical of me to FOMO into something right now. Um, also, sorry, but there was a super chat earlier from Mac Jones. Mac Jones. Shout out to Mac Jones um, for the 199 super chat mentioning DJT and a potential short squeeze. So we'll take a look at this DJT. Yeah, right now, okay, this is I think we we kind of kind of given up the ghost a little bit to use a Sharifism here, because look how many times we've knocked on the door of VWAP on a WIC basis, and DJT is like, no, thank you. <laughs> uh, looked once, twice, OB thrice. Um, we are struggling with this VWAP area for whatever reason, and so I think to me, especially like these candles, it's it, literally I think these wicks are showing, hey, hey buyers, you're not welcome at VWAP. So I think for whatever reason, there is some kind of intense vehemence uh, with. <laughs> with which the stock does not want to be involved. So I, I want to keep an eye on this. Um, but to me, I, I do think that we would kind of need a VWAP break. And even that, it's not even like we're, we're breaking VWAP and seeing higher lows, because we're not, it's really inconsistent. All I'm seeing here is this continuous struggle with that 35. Lately, it's been 35 for VWAP, earlier 35, 40. But for whatever reason, this is the psychological level with which DJT is having a little bit of a battle here. Okay. Also, NVIDIA, if you if you fail this thing, I don't know why I'm pointing so aggressively, but if you fail this area again, someone is going short, someone is going short, and I am that someone, and we're giving this 10 pennies, and we're going to get involved. And this is what I mean. Like, this is this is what I'm saying. I think this is when that a scared trader is an efficient trader kicks in, when you have your levels you like. That's when you need to get involved. Because when I didn't have my levels, it's like, what's the point? We have our levels. We are waiting till 70s. I like that level. A, we rejected off it earlier. B, actually, no, we, we just keep having a support resistance area for whatever reason at 70s. So that is where the buck will stop for N to the V to the D to the L. How are you doing over here? I'm looking at INDO, Adara, because Ooh. it came into five, and that's the level that we wanted. We were looking for a defend of five, seeing as it was the IB high. And it was also the volume weighted at, well, just right at the volume weighted average price. It's trading 509, 505. Now the spread's opening up. Five pennies on a $5 stock. That's not what you want to see. So I am a little hesitant to get into INDO because I did get caught in a small cap gapper yesterday. And I cho chosenly got into the halt, obviously, but it dipped aggressively on me. And it caused me to do things I didn't necessarily want to do. So I'm going to be a little bit cautious today. Uh, as you say, what, once once burned? Once bitten, twice once, shy. One bit, once bitten, twice shy, yes, yes. That's the one. It's a weird analogy. I didn't make it I up. like it. <laughs> there's a, there's one in Arabic, too, that says um, if you get burnt by the tea, you you uh, you uh, try to cool the, the yogurt or something like that. It's kind of, it doesn't, it's not as eloquent, obviously. Neil English. looks a little confused. <laughs> what? Did you put the yogurt are you, in Are the you tea? making fun of my culture, bro? 
You making fun of my culture, bro? Hurt? No, man. They, nobody said anything about hurt. I said burnt. So you blow into, into uh, the, uh, what's it called, yogurt, because it's cold. So it's kind of like an oxymoron. You don't need to blow into something that's cold, smarty pants. Come on now. Why do you always give me a hard time when I'm on the show? I don't give you a hard time when I'm on the show, bro. It's Friday. All right. Uh, anyway, uh, moving on. I'm looking at this five uh, dollar area on INDO, and we'll uh, we'll decide whether to get in or not in a few minutes. Yeah. So NVDL dancing with this 90 MA. It is. A, it's a, it's honestly more. It's like tightrope walking here. I wanted 70s. We break above to 75s. We do we do not do so with the viciousness. I'm comfortable staying in this for the time being, but my eyes are on the prize here. And um, I just said that because it rhymed. Right now, we're literally just on whether or not we need to leave this trade. That's all my eyes are on. So we're watching this area like a hawk. I think we're going to reverse. Um, and if we reverse and hold this, I'm going to flip long. Actually, that's going to be the plan. So um, yeah, we're going to get out. Adara, you have to get out. Um, so we're going to leave. That's cool. Um, I am interested in potentially playing this reversal, though. If we, if we do end up popping off this area, I'll take 70s long. But right now, you can't take a long until you get out of your short. So we're out of the short. and. It's probably going to be like I bit, and the second I get it, it goes back again. We're a little bit red on the day right now, but that's okay. That's okay. You know, we're still we're still up on NVDL, and again, I'm trying to play my PNL less and more just trades I like. Nice, you know, NVDL. If we're going to have this little bounce area, if we're going to be a little bit of a bouncy castle. I might, I might. Hopefully, I'm not too dull to enter this bouncy castle because I am interested in getting involved in this NVDL bounce. I bit's coming to the top of the range. Things I like are are in play right now. And I am very excited to to get involved here. Um, yeah, I don't know this. this yeah, we're getting. We're, we're, I think we're going to take this NVDL. That is for darn sure. How goes your Tesla? It, I didn't. Oh, Tesla is fine, but I want to show INDO because this is why I was hesitant to get in at five, guys. So we had that level, and it was dancing in front of five, and it was showing you that there were buyers on that side. But like yesterday, um, you know, I had a level that I liked, and initially there, there was a level of support there, and then the bottom just dropped off big. And like you can see there, 25 pennies that quick, it drops off from that $5 level, breaks VWAP, breaks all the support levels. So I'm keeping my eye on that, but that's not gonna be a trade that I wanna take today. Um, yeah, now it's not tradable because it's below the volume weighted average price. So Tesla goes well. Um, well, I'm looking at getting in NVDL as well. I'm not going to just jump into this, but we did put a bit of a higher low there, uh, holding up at 815. Prior to that, we were holding up at about 813. 812.90 is technically the, the low on the day right now. But keeping my eye on that, uh, what else we got over here? You know what, we still have Apple at 165, quite frankly. So sorry for the, uh, the dark pool prints over here. We'll bring in the side chart. But this is what I'm looking at, man. How many times are we gonna keep finding support at 165? Tell you, I'm not gonna take it though, because it's not really moving up. Sure, it's holding up above 165, but what's the move here, to take 15 pennies? Because, I mean, it's rejecting off the 10 period now. The best case scenario is um, it moves about 50 pennies or thereabouts, because that's where VWAP is. And it's already shown you its intention to reject VWAP. So we'll keep eyes on um, AAPL, see if this one wants to get away from the lows of Dara. Yeah, so we're in NVDL. We're basically about to be out of NVDL if we break below these 60s. I got into the long. I did say I would flip long if, if we held that area. Now I'm just thinking I was a little bit too aggressive with, with my out um, or my stop for the short, but that's okay. You know, like I'm still trying to get used to the, the whole, I think, I think one thing that's really hard is, is knowing when you have to ed exit a, a trade because of your risk management principles, and then it just turns out you set your exit in an incorrect place. And, but that's okay, right? Like, I, I had my impetus for leaving. I left, and I, I can't complain about that. But right now, I am happy in the long so far. We're going to take out some of this around 80s. So we're going to take about, no, actually, let's do, like, 90s. So I'm looking at this chart again. I think 90s is going to be, so we'll do, like, 87s. Um, and we're going to take out part of the position there, but half the position, and then we're going to save pieces for dreams. Dreams do not go any further than 34. Instead of do not pass go, do not collect $200, we'll be do not pass um, go, I don't know, we... It's a Friday. The analogy died a little bit there, but that's okay. We're in this NVDL. Also, too, I, I want to say, I because I just realized through what you were saying, I kind of have a question. With stuff like, um, would you say with regards to the lesson today being FOMO, that having your um, your rule for your small caps, does that help you avoid FOMO? 
Like if they're below, yeah. yeah oh, I was gonna say certainly. I or mean, if how many times have you looked up at the scanner and seen like something up triple digits, but you look at the chart and it's trading below VWAP. So yeah, absolutely. I I gotta agree with you on that. Um, it's definitely helped. Tesla is back at VWAP though, so I've already put my stop for my break of uh, the level on NVDL, but this one is now starting to put in lower highs. So we're initially we were putting in higher highs. That kind of that trend has changed a little bit here. So we may have to look the other way here on TSLA as it looks like it may be giving up the ghost at this level. Uh, I'm not going to just jump into it quickly. I want to see VWAP. Uh, price action closed below VWAP aggressively. And by aggressively, I'm talking about like 25 pennies or something like that. VWAP right now, my chart is 149.39. It's trading at 47s. We're break even right now on uh, the remaining portion of the TSLL trade, but uh, already taking the majority out of it, keeping my eye on Tesla to see if it does hold that VWAP area. The other trade that I was looking at was this Microsoft trade, and we wanted to have another shot at that 400 level. It doesn't look like it's gonna give it to you right now though. Right now, it's finding a bit of support at 401, coming back into that 40150 level. And if it does make it up into the volume weighted average price, this could be an interesting short because, well, it's shown you that it's going to reject off that level multiple times today. Uh, right now, VWAP just a little bit above that 402 and a half at that 402 and two thirds level. So, another level to look for there on MSFT if you're looking short. Uh, some of these ones getting a bit of a bounce here to the high I side. Stole a corn. I just to let everybody know that. Oh, nice. Oh, so it wasn't part of the salad? No. Captain Corn. Corn. Captain Corn. All right. Shout out to the Katina man. Looks good, baby. Uh, what do you got over there, Daryl? Yeah, I'm in this NVIDIA right now. I think we might be uh, rejecting a little bit at 80, so I think I'm going to get out at least half this position um, and then save pieces. Um, but yeah, so basically, I, I, I'm liking what we're seeing so far. I, I want to. I might have to get everything out at 80s, so we might just scalp this out because I don't like the rejection that we had at 80s. I also don't like the, this little candle down in the queue. We're, we're going to watch and wait, but I'm going to take at least half out here because that just feels, uh, for my scalping nature, the right thing to do. You, I feel like usually my instinct is kind of to scalp out part and I don't scalp out part. I find I usually regret it, whereas I do not regret when I do scalp out, I, I never regret it because at least I took some profit. Do you know what I mean? So for me, and I think that's one example of, of sometimes having JOMO. I have, you know, I, and there will be times where I have FOMO. I scalp out way too early and the move goes way higher. But at least I do still have some profit, right, as opposed to not scalping and not having profit. So yeah. there we go. We took out some of this NVDL. I think we're, we're going to keep the, the rest of this position and see what occurs. But also, thank you very much to Ahmed Amwala. For the, and you were right yesterday, I did look it up, it's Durham. The, um, the AE Durham at $10 super chat, long QQQ for possible bounce. I see what you mean here. I'm on the five minute chart. We do have that little wick to the downside here of buyers overwhelming sellers. Just a skosh right now. We are knocking on the door of that 9 EMA. But as much as I have, and I've said, I'm a little bit too reliant on this level, potentially the 9 EMA. For me though, the bigger thing is gonna be, look at this double bottom, this massive support we had earlier at 419. To me, that will be a more key resistance level. And that's also why I wanna scalp out of my NVIDIA before we get to that 34. Cause I think if we get a little bit dicey here at this 419 on QQQs, I think NVIDIA, Nvidia and her little sister NVDL will certainly react in some way or another. So I wanna be definitely watching that. I am trying to get out of NVDL at about 94, so I'm please just punch about that. Very happy I flipped to the long, because that's something I do a lot. Sometimes if my trades just don't work out, I'll, I'll leave them be. But if I have, I, I'm happy I was able to flip to the long, because I still had the catalyst I wanted for the trade. And look, we kind of get near 419s. We get a little bit scurred here in the QQQs. NVDL feeling the effects of that as well, so I might have to see what happens here. Carlos Dart saying the market's about to range. I sure hope so, <laughs> as someone who is a bit of a range trader. But I think right now, I'm not seeing any huge ranges yet, except for, and I keep missing out on this, IBIT. <laughs> Adara, this range keeps happening. You keep missing the timing on this. So I'm going to be watching this again. The thing is, though, too, I don't, and I've done this before, where I think a range is going to keep going, so I FOMO into it, and it doesn't last. Okay, we're going to do this. We're doing it. Um, so I do like this area. Actually, okay, I'm going to wait to get out of NVDL just because I don't want to have all this going. But I think this IBIT range to me is just kind of too good to pass up. Yeah, Bitcoin's great look. Bitcoin's looking really similar. Great look. Thank you. Um, Eddie R, a look at Mara. Yeah, I mean, look, it's on the way up. That's what it's doing right now. Nice uh, little move up here for MARA. $15 or thereabout close. I think it was like 1504. So just above that $15 area. 
Um, and now it's about a dollar and a half above that as, uh, where is Bitcoin at right now? 64, uh, 64, 656, okay. So look, it's, it's a good look. Um, you have the RSI coming in to overbought territory right now above that uh, 70, looking at that 80 print, you're near the top end of the Bollinger Band. It's, it's a good look. I mean, 9% to the good on the day. It's just you're not going to see me jump in uh, all that quickly into it. But yeah, shout out to you, Eddie R. Good luck there. Uh, what else we got over here? Anybody else uh, doing anything? KH, uh, he says, apparently he told me. All right, brother. Sounds good. Thank you for uh, telling me. Tell me again next time. Um, keeping an eye on MARA. We'll see what this one gets on the day. Uh, Tesla holding the volume weighted average price, so it's precipitating me to hold on to my TSLL trade, but it is now a, a bit of a tighter range. Let's be real about it. So we have about a 149 and a third to the low and a 150 to the top, and that's been happening since about... Uh, 10 past 11. So the last 40 minutes or so, Tesla's been in about a 60 some odd penny range, having trouble with that 150 area. Initially though, obviously we had the higher highs and higher lows. That's come into, uh, yeah, that's that pattern has come into question. Now, let's go into the what's really at the lows right now, which is by the name of AAPL, breaking down again below that 165. And I'm sorry for these dark pool wicks, so we'll bring in uh, the other chart over here. And this trade on Apple uh, looks excellent if you're taking the short off the 10 period EMA. You're gonna have these outlying events when you get a break of the 10 EMA, but look where it's stopping out at, the 20 EMA. So, you know, usually when we have these retracements, most of them come into the 10. Every now and again, you'll have one that comes into the 20. So I guess it's kind of hard to account for that because you don't know what's gonna happen. But right now, we are at lows on AAPL, below 165. Something tells me though, this gets bought up uh, and closes above 165 by the end of the day, just so that uh, you know the technical level will be there. Uh, so we'll keep eyes on that. All right, Tesla now breaking above that 150 area again. Uh, not by much though. Let's see what TSLL is doing while it's doing that. Yeah, we're right back into 580. Really nothing to, uh, to report too crazily about. Let's look at NVDA. People yelling about NVDA, taking a bit of a, a bath over here. Okay. I got out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you taking did. a bath, meaning like it's not good. Yeah, that's what that means, right, man? Um, anyway, so right off that 822, where is that? Where'd that make it to? 822 and three quarters, all the way down to 816 and two thirds there, but it really is still holding that lower end of the range. For whatever reason, this 817, uh, let's just say high 816s, it's been a bit of a, a bottom for the past half an hour or so. So we'll keep eyes on NVDA. Maybe we'll get a trade on this one at Arrow. Yeah, I mean, um, we have Surya asking here about the DIA. This is something that I feel comfortable trading right now, just especially as I'm new to the live. I, I wouldn't uh, feel comfortable taking like this almost $400. But I think this is a, you know, certainly a nice little chop and turn, nice bounce off the VWAP. And honestly, I love this range. If anyone knows if there's like um, a levered version of this that is less expensive, I love this bounce off VWAP range on the Dow. This is gorgeous, and this is something I actually would want to trade. So thank you for pointing this one out, um, Surya. Yeah, I did get out of this NVDL, and I want to explain why. And this is why I always say, Dara, just scalp out everything. This was, I feel like for me, part of it too is I said I don't really have FOMO, but I must, because what I'll do is I'll stay in hoping for more when I should have just scalped out. So this was an example of FOMO staying in this trade. I should have just scalped everything out. That's okay, we're still up on the name. Um, we're down in the day, but we're up on the name. And like I said, trying to trade a little bit less with PL, so still happy I took that risk. And I really like that partial exit. I should have just taken everything out there, but that's okay. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. We got that iBit range, and I was really pleased this punch about this. Took about 10 pennies on this. If we bounce here off that 75s again, I'm taking this long, but it looks like we could maybe break a little bit lower. So I don't want to rush in to anything here. NVIDIA also kind of forming a bit of a range here, or at least on my NVDL, it's about 40s to about 80s more or less. So again, we could be breaking lower. It looks like we are. Isn't it so fun when you talk and as you're talking, the stock decides to be sassy. It does. And be like, that's not what you're, it does like a little finger at you. It's like, well, what are you saying? I'm uh -oh. going this direction. I will move in that direction. Don't you let it talk sassy to you again. Do not let it do that. Yeah, for a second, I thought the oh no was about something else. I was like, oh no. But yeah, so right now, the, yeah, this NVDL, we're keeping an eye on it. Happy with iBit. 
um, was able to, to make a bit of profit on that. <laughs> and we're bouncing once again here at these 75s. Oh, Adira, get involved. Get involved, Adira. Um, so, indeed, we are. Apple's tanking. Apple's, oh. Apple, 164.68, now low of day on APL. I fixed the uh, the wick there so you can see it a little bit better. There is 165 really giving up the ghost, especially these last two one-minute candles here coming off that 164.94 all the way down. Now, new low of day, 164.65 now is AAPL. But you know what? The overall market is uh, kind of this way. Guys, SMCI is down 18%. Okay, it's at 760 right now on SMCL. Let's pull up this bad boy and have a look at the disaster that is SMCI. Let's pull up the um, volume histogram so we can see where the, the volume is taking place at. Okay, a tank city it is right there holding the low end of the Bollinger Bands. But look at this, look at this. Okay, so something interesting happening here. We're getting higher highs on the RSI and lower highs on the price. Interesting. Uh, we're, and we're also getting higher lows on the RSI as well. So is, is this something to be interested in or is just something to say, ah, we're gonna dismiss this because right now we are at day's low on SMCI 759.09. And if you were to look at the price action, RSI divergence, how many times have we talked about that this week? When uh, these two indicators, well, the price is not an indicator. When these two elements diverge, usually it sometimes means that, you know, the downtrend or the uptrend in whatever case we're looking at it might be coming to an end. So this is very interesting here. I'm probably not going to trade SMCI, period, but that's something to keep your eye out on guys, um, RSI price action divergence right now on SMCI. That's all, that's why it's at day's low, by the way. Apple printed more day's lows as I was talking, and Tesla is right back into that volume weighted average price. So now we're back even, break even yet again on TSLL, but it hasn't broken VWAP decisively. Uh, so I'm gonna continue to pack my patience in here, but I'm very much cognizant of the range that has been taking place on Tesla now between VWAP and between 150. It's not holding strict, but the fact of the matter is there is a range to be had here, but for how long? It doesn't have to go on forever and ever. Oh, we just broke 17.3 on the NQ. So big, big drop there. We were trying to hold up 17.3 and there it goes. It has gone 17.292. I think we're like well over a thousand points off the highs. Let's go into the uh, daily here and see how much we are off the highs. So from that local high that we printed over here, 18.7 it looks like, all the way down. We are down eight and a quarter percent from the high into the low today, 17.181. That was the overnight low. From where we're at right now though, we're down 7.6% from the high that we printed on March 20th, 18.7 to where we're at currently. Now keep in mind that an official correction happens at 10%, so we're not that far away from it at the moment. So keep your eye on that. But 17.3 uh, here just gave up Adara. Yeah, this was interesting to watch here on, um, on my iBit because every time I doubt the tenacity of this range, it, it flexes his little arm muscles like Adara, I am still here. So I stayed in this. I was watching to see what we did at 70s because that was, to me, a very interesting area on both iBit. And then in terms of if you're looking at Bitcoin, it's going to be about 64,350 uh, uh, 64, on BTC. But yeah, I'm staying in iBit because I liked that bounce. We bounced with the viciousness, with the swiftness. Also, I guess shout out to any Swifties because her album came out today. So I said Swifties. Hold on, what happened with that? Did you hear about this? Oh my gosh, my dad is so sweet. He sent me bad reviews for it right at midnight. Like, I wonder if the men stayed up to send bad no, reviews. No, that's not what I'm talking about. Oh. Did you hear that it leaked? It did leak. And then people were like, her actual Swifty fans came out and they're like, we're not going to listen to it until she releases oh, it on her time. That's what that video was. Mm -hmm. Okay, because my dad said he saw some students watching some video because he's like a teacher. And he thought, he was like, I don't know what they're watching. But I guess that's that was sweet. the leaks. Yeah, that's interesting. But no, I thought, sorry, I got, I thought it was like bad reviews. Because yeah, apparently this album has not had the best reviews. Oh, no? Yeah. Eek. I'm sure you're happy about that. I, I was, which is, I think is why my dad sent them to me. <laughs> um, but yeah, so so interesting. Yeah, sorry, I didn't, I, I forgot about the leak, yeah. But um, 
but yeah, this 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 eye bit here, happy with it, just eye bit. Uh, so we're gonna have to wait and see what happens. But yeah, this range has has been really proving itself. So I do not want to go chasing waterfalls. I like the strength of this, and I would like to kind of continue to see it hold um, hold up. So there we are. Um, wow. Yeah. What else? What else well, we're, we're at lows on everything right now. Well, not everything, but a lot of stuff. I'm still waiting for that 400 to come in on uh, Softy. But look at Apple absolutely give up 165. I think this is the, uh, is this 52-week lows on Apple? Let me find out exactly what the 52-week, okay. So 52-week lows on AAPL are as follows. 162.14. So we're $2.00 away from that 52 week low. 162.14, 52 week low on Apple, 199.62, 52 week high on Apple. So we just printed 164.35 exactly. Now I gotta tell you, if this thing makes its way back into 165, do we short here? Like this is really interesting. Now we were talking about 165 as a level of support. Now is it resistance? So Apple absolutely flushing to the downside and taking the market along with it. The market we were talking about below 17.3 just popped up uh, again there at 17.3. Well, just below. I think it got in 17.290 or so popping up. But again, dead cat bounce. I'd be looking to possibly short this at 17.350. We had a bit of a, a top there. Let's call it that. So initially we had support at support level two on the pivots on the NQ June contract. And then we gave up the ghost at the 17.350. And then we started using it as a level of uh, resistance from this side. So essentially from 1020 to about, sorry, from 1120 to about 1150. So if we come back into this level, is this a short? I may look to take this on the T triple Qs. But yeah, this is very interesting over here on the futures, even though holding the 300 point level, I think that there is definitely a resistance at the at the 50 point level. Now, Tesla right back above the volume weighted average price again. So there is something to this range here between VWAP and the uh, the 150 level on TSLA. AAPL though, bouncing a little bit over here. Let's check out some of the other names that we had. NVDL holding just above 33 bucks. That happens to coincide with that 813 level on NVIDIA. What else we got over here? TSLL will break even on at the moment. Uh, INDO is still below the volume weighted average price. So we'll keep eyes on some trades here, but packing my patience for now. J Lee, AMD 149 now. Oh, goodness gracious. Goodness, goodness. Let's have a look at AMD. Bring it in. There it is. So, wow, look at this, Jay. At holding uh, the low end of the Bollinger Bands and giving way that 150 didn't really seem to matter all that much. Initially, we definitely had some support at 150, especially that 150.50 area. That was the IB low right at the, the opening there. And then we kind of troughed out, defended 150 again, defended it a few more times here at 10 past the hour, and then really gave up the ghost. Now, what's the trade? I mean, we could look to short on the pops, and the pops here would be probably 150. I mean, anything into 150, maybe you're looking short, owing to these three areas of defense here, knowing that this was a support level, is it narrow resistance? So, uh, shout out Jay Lee, uh, good luck there with you, and I know the Katina man had AMD short too. Uh, Dan Emmons, 200 NQ points uh, on the NQ short, shout out to you, Dan. Uh, let's see what else people are talking about over here, Pretty Panda. Can stocks ready for next leg up? Be careful in those. Be careful in the close. I'm not holding over the weekend. Uh, okay. <laughs> it just used a lot of uh, words I can't say. Um, what else we got? Kyle Burdett, NVIDIA, about new low of day. Apple, remember how we were headed for 180 a few days ago? Oh, I do remember that, man. I also remember being at 18.7, and now we're at 17.291. So, yeah, the whole market really here, Kyle, is giving way, but... I mean, we were up so aggressively all year. Yeah. Right. So. Well, I was just thinking. I remember you had like that that um, great like Microsoft area you were pointing out last week, all week that 420, 421, 420. and then earlier today you're talking about Microsoft 400. We are. And I was literally 50 it's pennies crazy. away from that. Yeah. It's it, it's intense. Yeah. So I just think it's interesting how with the swiftness and the viciousness with which this market will move on 
and any kind of baselessness. But you know, speaking of things that could need a swiftness or a viciousness, I bet you want to get going. You were arranging, like we we could get in this it, range per candle, as Sharif says, yes. was so nice earlier. We could get literally in and out of the trade. And now Ibit is taking its sweet time, slowing down. But I have no reason to leave, so we're going to stay patient. We're going to, patience is not my strong suit, um, unfortunately. Uh, but that is something I am working towards. And I think being impatient has certainly gotten me before, for example, earlier on this Ibit trade. So being patient is going to be the key here. Just staying calm, keep calm, carry on. Breathe. Uh, it reminds me of as well of that that tweet that Sean was sharing earlier today about be patient and stay calm and everything. So that's what I'm trying to do in this trade. But right now, one thing you don't have to be patient and wait for is Neil's lesson du jour. Welcome to the lesson of the day, brought to you, of course, always by Real Trading. Hey, uh, one of my favorite lines out there is wet the proverbial beak, right? So I'll shout out to the professor and Adara. Um, because we use it a lot, and you probably, if you watch the live show, you'll hear, I'm going to wet my beak at this price. And it's not to, it's not to say that um, it's a good thing or a bad thing in all situations. It's more about what it means in trading, because the discussion today has been about FOMO, the fear of missing out, right? Like, nobody wants to miss a good opportunity for a trade. You get antsy for a lot of reasons. FOMO could be, oh, I'm missing an entry point, but it's not quite at my price. So you get in. Uh, FOMO could be, oh, I'm in the money on something, I'm not taking it out, but my, next, my first target hasn't been hit yet, but I see myself in the money. That could be the same thing. Like, there's different ways in which you get FOMO, and really, why what the beak even existed is, a, is, a, is like a topic or an idea or a concept is for that reason. So what I always found was one of the easier things to do is if you have an overwhelming tendency to want to get a piece in early then sometimes scratching the itch or wetting the beak can help train you off of it. So in a situation where you don't want to get in at the exact, it's not at your exact price, you're feeling like there's a little bit of a curl happening in a stock, you always have the option to get in a smaller amount. Now getting it all in early probably doesn't make any sense. But if you wet the beak, that's going to satisfy that little urge in you to make the execution if it's not the perfect spot. And the example I'm going to put here is, you know, Tesla shorting into previous day resistance. So there's 151, it isn't quite at 151, and worker, like whether it works or not isn't really the point, but at the open, it got to the even dollar level, looked like it was running into some problems just above the 150, so it's an easy spot to say, oh man, I want a little piece in here, I'm trying to execute, but if you execute everything off 150, or you know, 150 quarter just above it, instead of holding for the real top at 151, A, even though it works, you just give up some of your profit. B, the more important thing is, the actual strategy that you're working off of has been violated because you didn't take that perfect entry. So what'll end up happening, when you actually make a decision, it helps to train you. So if you don't, look, if you put it all in at that one spot, it goes up against you, instead of risking 30 or 40 cents, it goes up against you 70 or 80, it still works out. You're still profitable on the day, you took it all too early, and you don't necessarily have that information that you lost something, because you didn't end up making both decisions to, to, ver to, check the, to check each one. If you wet the beak early, and then still take your fill and get the rest of your position up at the top, well, now you have two decision points that when you're going back over the trade, it's much easier to not just look at your P&L, but you can say, hey, you know, when I wet the beak, that wasn't a very good decision. Maybe it was a bad idea that I did that. When you make a decision in the market, you give yourself something to evaluate. Now, in terms of getting out too early, that's more like scratching the itch. There's no such thing. I mean, taking profits is taking profits. Um, but sometimes if you have, let's say, a breakout trade, sometimes a breakout on like NVIDIA, It'll immediately go a dollar or two dollars. You want that first out should be at a buck, not at 50 cents. I, had, I do that a lot. But if you, if you see it go in the money 50 cents, and you're like, oh, I see that profit, and you just get out out of almost panic, that's not the best idea in the world. So again, wetting your beak in this particular case would be 
sizing down or having a smaller amount that you're willing to take at that first profit point because you know you're going to see that P&L and then want to grab that profit. Or, or I'm going to see, and use the example of Tesla again because we're right here, or I'm going to see that previous resistance level show support at 150. I know the move is back into VWAP. The first out usually is a retrace into VWAP. But I know that 150 off 51 could be a thing. So I'm going to make sure that I'm planning before I get in to take some out in front of it. And once you've wet that beak, again, you have a decision point that you can now evaluate. And that's an important thing. You make a decision, you can evaluate said de decision when you're reviewing your trade. You had a reason for getting out at that point, you can evaluate if it was a good one, but you're gonna hold on to something. If it goes the whole way and you get it all out, fine, that was part of your plan. But if it's like, oh, it's in the money, I gotta take something out, wet your beak with a small amount. And one of the other ways, and one of my favorite ways of uh, expressing this is an extreme example. And this is a trick that on IPOs, I was talking to a few traders about back, you know, back in the day when we first started trading IPOs. One of the more simple, I don't have an IPO to pull up for you guys uh, today. I think there might have been one, but it doesn't really matter. The point is, if you're taking something like this, a gimmick trade, sometimes you're just going to go long off the open. Right? So imagine Tesla is going to open like right here, you know, like a 148. Or let's use a chart like, let's use a more extreme a chart like in NVIDIA, right? Let's say it's going to open up right here like 830 bucks. One of the things that you do on an IPO is sometimes just take that opening print. You take the opening print, you throw a stop underneath like the big support level. So if a stock opens at you know, 830, maybe it has an 825 support, and you just throw your stop underneath and you're going to rip and run. A lot of times, because it's that gimmicky of a trade, you're risking $5, you throw an offer at $10 or $15, and you really, regardless of whether you think the company's good in the IPO, you might just be holding it for that move, and you want to get it out. So it goes to the first resistance, you're like, oh crap, there's size on the bid, or the offer, that's my reason for getting out, and you throw the offer out there. Fine, it goes from 830 to 840, you get it all out in one shot, that's your trade, your risk reward is fantastic, you win. But if your goal is to work on trying to hold them for extended moves, but you still want to have the principle of that range trade, then what I used to do in that spot is if I was taking an opening print for 1,000 shares, the second it would open up, first of all, I'd put my stop order in. And then the next thing i do is I would just change my default to 900. And what that would do is my downside is protected for everything if it breaks. If it breaks, I'm just getting out of all of it. But by changing my default shares, it guarantees that when I fire an order to take that profit in front of resistance, I'm automatically holding the last 100 shares in that situation. And that is going to get held back into my previous stop level where everything was. And when it, if it breaks out, then I get to hold that little bit of a piece. And what that does for you is it allows you to trade the original strategy where you're, you know, you're taking the move, you're not really comfortable holding for more, you don't like the notion of holding for more, maybe you haven't judged whether it's good holding for more. It allows you to take that move, you wet the beak, in this case for most of it, but you force yourself to hold that last piece. And then if it breaks out, you suddenly get to make actual decisions with something when it continues to move. Otherwise, you're just sort of always paper trading it each time, which has its own value, but it's not the same thing. So wetting your beak can mean a lot of things, scratching the itch can mean a lot of things, but it's a process by which you make a decision at a point where you feel the urge to, but you don't do so for everything. And that allows you to evaluate the decision at that point, maybe it makes you better at holding it, realizing you got out too early. Um, it certainly allows you to bank some profits, it takes that pressure off, you can relax a little bit more, which is a good thing for when you're evaluating your move. So whether you call it scratching the itch or wetting the beak, I think it's a valuable tool to have in your toolbox. We use it every single day here at Real Trading. And you're probably going to hear it a few more times in Learn to Trade, uh, which I think is fantastic. You're always trying to get better, and that's the lesson of the day. Wet your beak. So, um, eloquent, informative, and awesome as always. Caught that quick, didn't I, Ram Ram? Um, yes, thank you for that. As Neil was dropping hot lines, the market decided to also drop, not hot lines, just drop in general, baby. Look at that Microsoft blow through 400 like it didn't even matter. Last time around, we had a nice little uh, hammer candle that formed at that level. Nothing this time. What's going on, Katina, man? Five Flat on what? 
The Katina Man is $5 in the money on AMD. If you are following along with Neil and Sean's trades, make sure to head on over to more Trader TV Live. Thank you, Ram Ram. As you'll see, Sean's positions and entries on the right, Neil's on the left, and we have a plethora of other information there that I'm sure you'll find useful for your day trading journey. Uh, as we were talking, Tesla did break, finally, below the volume weighted average price on a closing basis, which precipitated me to get the remaining balance of my TSLL trade out. And we are blowing through levels like they don't even matter. We have a possible 800 NVIDIA coming in here real soon, guys. And so that's gonna be decision-making time at the $100 level. I mean, it doesn't seem that long ago. We were just talking about 1,000, but here it is, 800 on NVDA, about a four bucks and two thirds away. It's just a smidge below that support level two on uh, the pivots at 801 and change. So keep your eye on an NVIDIA 800, but it doesn't really matter what is trading on the day. Everything is down into the right. All the Mag 7 names, Adara, are in the red. Chips, though, really taking it on the chin today. It has been a bad day for the microchip semiconductors. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy I got out of the NVDL when I did. Like I said, I was a little, I was a little bit grumpy about this. I was like, I was grumping to Sharif off camera there. I was like, should have taken my whole position out of NVDL here. But that's okay. That Still was you being grumpy? Yeah. That was a very happy grumpy. Okay, well, I'm happy to hear that. That's good to know. Um, but yeah, so, so that's all good. <laughs> I mean, I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. yeah, the thing is, I was, Shreve would hear me, I was singing a song about ranges. I want ranges in the market. I was like, give me a range. So the market, um, I guess, wasn't a fan of my singing because it's not giving me any ranges. Oh, six. Oh, Tesla, dollar 20 in the. Another one. Money, 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 money. Sorry, Sean. Another one. Oh, wow. Ah, yeah, that was a super Kyle. chat for that, yeah. I did see that. Thank you, Kyle. Was dropping hotlines. Go ahead, Adair. Yeah, sorry, I was going to say thank you, Kyle, for the super chat on that. Yes, also, Kyle. I cannot believe I am doing this. I'm a little bit nervous doing this. I do this with a lot of trepidation. I'm getting involved in AMC. Because honestly, look at how well it's holding this 318 level. I was thinking to the markets asking for a range, and AMC's like, well, you know, we have something playing at 2.30 p.m. No, I'm joking. But the point is there was an opening here. There's a, I guess, a, a screening a range available for me. And when I say range, I mean because it's not a perfect range, mind you, but you do have that support here at 318 uh, that I really like. We had resistance, clear resistance here. Now it's forming into clear support. I like it. I'm gonna give, we'll see what we do at 314. We're giving it a cool four pennies. I'm comfortable with that. Trying to make minimum six. So that is a very weird mathematical a risk to reward ratio, but I'm happy with it in terms of the PNL. I might've missed this opportunity. I'm going for 318s, but that's okay. I have the little order there ready to go sitting pretty. So hopefully we get involved. Tank City, Tank City, says Kyle Burdett. We also got another super chat from Mac Jones, Mac Jones. <laughs> um, saying Trump to speak on naked shorting at rally tomorrow. Yeah, we'll take a look at DJT in the place to be and see how that's going. Also, yeah, I think this AMC really did go without me, but that's okay. That's okay. Just looking for ranges. If I don't see anything I like, I'm not going to take it. A little bit red on the day, but um, but happy. That's a, we're we're not we're not too down. Just a, less than like a McDonald's cup of coffee. So I'm okay with that. DJT, are you going to really give me the range trade right now? I don't know if I trust this, but look at how we're just hovering here. This 34 to 34.50. I don't know if I feel comfortable trading this unless I see something that's really really catching my eye, especially with this kind of heading down in the market and the fact that we're so below VWAP. I was mentioning this earlier too for another super chat, I think for Mac Jones, we cannot break above this 35. And I think now we're breaking below the bottom of that range at 34. So I don't know if this is something I'll get involved in, but getting a little bit compressed here with these lower highs and higher lows here for DJT. We'll have to see in what direction this will decide to break. Uh, but yeah, certainly the market's like, hey, we, we heard it's a Friday. We're going to give you guys a little bit of excitement, a little bit of spice, yeah. a little bit of viciousness and swiftness to head into this weekend. So, I mean, I, I'm here. I, it's been quite quite the, the market to look at. That is for darn sure. I like that light bulb there um, from Sean. What's the idea? What's going on, Katina, man? The idea was this morning at 8.30 when he said short. So <laughs> make sure you're hanging out with us every day, baby. 8.30 a.m. live every day. Get the sticky note. Get on it every day. We are live. Well, every trading day. Uh, let's lock, talk about SMCI here because, well, it's down 18.58%. Look where it's been getting short at. So I just made this observation. The 50 period has really been a, a nice go-to area here. 
for the re or you know short the pops kind of thing. Um, this takes us all the way back into that 933. That was the first time we retraced into 50. We had it again over here, 1030, 1045. Again, uh, another attempt at the 50 here at 11 and change, uh, say 1145 to about 11.35 to about around 11.50. We had another attempt over here at 12. And so this is interesting here. If uh, SMCI makes it back into say 7.63, 7.64, this could be an interesting short on SMCI. It's been, I mean, how beat up could it, how more beat up could it get? But let's be real about it. It is one of the reddest days we've seen in a while here. The NQ is down one and three quarters. I gotta tell you though, big difference here between the ES and the NQ. The NQ is a full percentage point lower than the ES today. So it really is tech, the tech world. Let's call it the mag seven and microchips that are really bringing uh, the NQ down. And the Dow is actually green, believe it or not. The Dow is actually up 0.18 and uh, the Russell is outperforming both the ES and the NQ. The Russell's only down a third, not even 0.29 for the Russ. Anyway, keeping an eye here, on uh, SMCI, I wanna see if this one makes it back into 7.62, it's almost there guys. So here, here's a curl up here on M SMCI. I was looking at um, the 50 period. It didn't quite make it to the 50 period the last few times, so you may wanna short a little bit before this, but goes without saying, this is a very volatile stock. It is very spready and it's also very expensive. So if you're gonna take anything on this, just manage your risk well or don't trade it at all. Otherwise, you could find yourself in some trouble. Use smaller positions if you're have, having trouble, um, you know, if you're having trouble with, uh, with the day, try to use smaller positions on this, by the way. Okay, so we'll keep an eye on that. Now, while uh, Neil was dropping hot lines, a new small cap gapper showed up here. Um, TWG, this one trading above the volume at average price, but Range per candle is ridiculous. Uh, and it's having these huge wicks up and then huge wicks down. It kind of slowed down a little bit over here midday, but not really. So I'd be looking for anything off VWAP here with a tight stop through the break of the 50. Because it hasn't broken through the 50 on the VWAP breaks. It's held above the 50. So if you're looking to get in maybe a 230 dip trade with um, you know a 220 out, you risk 10 pennies on TWG. Let me give you the details on this. So it's 70 million market cap, the float, uh, wow, I don't actually have the float on this. Well, or 29 million shares, excuse me, uh, 71 million market cap, 29 million shares. Is there a catalyst? I don't actually see a catalyst on TWG on the day. Um, anything from yesterday? Yeah, we had something yesterday. Top Wealth Group Limited announces closing IPO. of IPO. Thank you. Uh, yeah, no, it's okay. I'm um, thank you for showing me that. Uh, yeah, so this one IPO'd a couple of days ago. It looks like this one IPO'd on the 16th. So big move up here for TWG Adara. Yeah, it's a, certainly not a twig today. Um, <laughs> big, a, a large, um, I guess a what a scepter. It's a scepter in this there market go. there to the upside. But yeah, this NVDL, I'm taking it short. I want to explain why I'm taking it short. Also, I am a little bit nervous about this short, but I want to explain my impetus for doing so. We have this big pop here into that, um, up from the bottom here into this 3270, and then we kind of fizzled out. Initially, I was trying to get involved in the short uh, when we tried to retest it at 1370. I put 72, so I was one penny shy. Did not get involved, unfortunately, but that was the impetus for this NVDL trade. Um, the Qs look a little bit stronger here, so that does make me a bit nervous, but look, I, I want to look at this volume analysis, okay? Massive sell-off here in this red candle. Look at this volume compared to this next little green candle. This is lower than the last few candles we've had. So to me, that my, my take on that is going to be we have a little bit less, at least on the queues, volume to the upside than we do to the downside, at least for right now. Profit target for this is going to be uh, this 32.35, but we know what I am about. If we see a little pause earlier, we will indeed take some scalps um, because we have to be scalp nation over here. Not scalping earlier or not scalping all of it earlier was what got me a little bit chopped up in this earlier NVIDIA trade. We try not to make the same mistake twice. Uh, to quote that song by The Who, that was the theme song for one of the many CSI reboots, won't get fooled again. So uh, we'll not let uh, NVIDIA or NVDL in this case get us chopped up again. Um, once bitten, twice shy, or in my case, once bitten, twice aggressive. I don't know. Um, we, we tried something. I like the look here in NVDL, and I'm nice. Exciting times. I want to see if we if we pause at this 32, 
we're getting out, but I think we might actually go lower. So really happy I, I had the guts to take this trade. I remember Sean's tweet earlier that be confident, be calm, um, and be patient. I am not great at patience, and I'm not always great at being calm, but I think the confidence and the patience here kind of worked out, especially because I'm not always that patient. It was a little bit roundabout, but I'm happy with this trade. We scalped out, took about 20 pennies on NVDL. Whew. Very it's nice. Take a little bit of a moment to breathe there. Sorry for all the, the talk in there, guys, and all the, the yap in here. In these markets, how are you doing? Good. Just looking at TWG as it just made a huge move up there into 270. Prince new high a day and then true to form coming right back down into that 60 penny area. Be careful with this one. We said the range per candle is kind of wild. And uh, right now the five minute candle on a $2 name has 40 pennies worth of range. So, you know, trade this one carefully. TWG on the NQ. This one is... Um, is uh, what's it called? Is uh, an IPO. Sorry, I haven't slept a lot the last couple of days, guys, and I apologize because there's been a lot of stuff with work. So you're gonna have to excuse my slow mind today. AGBA also coming in here into the volume weighted average price. Another small cap gapper. I just saw this one, $102 million market cap. The float on this one, 16 million shares. It had a big day yesterday. We saw that, it kind of sold off there and faded off into the afternoon, closing below the volume weighted average price though. Today, 8.30, for whatever reason, starts pumping again. We come into yesterday's highs or you know one or two penny off the yesterday high, but again, like yesterday, we break down below VWAP. And today, we just reclaimed it here. So. Right at that 140 level, we get a dip trade, a rejection off the buck and a half, comes back into VWAP at a buck 40. So keep your eyes on AGBA if you are small cap inclined. As I was talking about AGBA, TWG skyrocketed up into three bucks and now it's dancing with the whole dollar level. Is this gonna halt? So TWG looking for uh, a break of the whole dollar level at three. We'll see if we get it. I don't know where the halt parameters are on this name, but awfully strong here comes uh, TWG, I was supposed to say DJT, but that would, uh, that would be obviously wrong. Uh, let's look at some of these large cappers quickly. Everything's still in the low end of the range, so I'll stick to my small cappers here. Yeah, I think too, yeah, I was thinking the same because this NVDL, I, I'm not touching this until I see what we do at this previous level, this 3270. If we reject that, I will be taking it short and I will be scalping it out like what we did with this trade earlier. And thank you guys so much for the support in the chat. Really appreciate it. Um, if not, though, I, I'm going to kind of wait and see. I was singing, singing to the markets, asking for a range, and I'm happy they gave me that little trade there on NVDL. And I, yeah, I'm honestly, Sharif can attest there was actual singing happening there. <laughs> when I was like, range. But yeah, so we did not also get involved in AMC. Really proud of the level I highlighted, though, because it did bounce. I was, uh, we missed my entry by, I think, like half a penny or something. But that's all right. More opportunities. Right now, I don't have any entries on here, though, just because I don't like that we didn't make a higher high. And there's not really enough movement here for me to, to want to take this range unless I took it with an exorbitant amount of shares, which is also not something I'm comfortable doing. With, doing. So that's okay. Um, way to, yeah, I think, honestly, NVIDIA breaking down here below. This could be a little bit, a little bit spicy, but not necessarily something that is necessarily within my oeuvre unless I take a little bit more of a look of it and have a plan. What else going on here? Let's look at, look at the cues and see what Q&A here with the Q is. What direction are you going? I don't know. But yeah, so um, also I think too, one thing I'm really learning is especially like looking at the, the NASDAQ and seeing how that impacts the trades. That was something Sean was mentioning to me as well a, a couple of weeks ago in terms of if you're, if you're looking at Meg seven names and wondering what direction, see what the Qs are doing because that can sometimes help you. That I think helped me with my NVIDIA trade, especially looking at this lower volume on, on uh, this other candle, which ended up actually closing red, but initially was green to kind of show me that, hey, I think the volume is a little bit stronger in selling, which is why I felt a little bit more comfy in that short. So, yeah, I mean, I think I think really we're, we're talk, we talk a lot about confluence and combining different economic indicators. And I think that this is one example. Volume can really help, especially if you're not sure about direction. Yeah. Like these little candles are different colors. And I find, you know, that really helps you in terms of are we seeing the buyer's more in control, the seller's more in control. Kyle Burdett as well in the chat helped me with that as well in the past. Just like, hey, look at volume and see what's happening at what moments. So interesting times these markets. Jameson mentioning a sell-off in the banks. So I want to look at this. I was mentioning this earlier on the desk because I was flummoxed by this move up in Wells Fargo. 
Like, we, we've fallen back a little bit here. We're still up over 3% here on WFC. I didn't see any news on this, but there was weirdly a lot of Twitter hyping for Wells Fargo. And also, they had some po they had oh. some uh, call options that I saw. So, yeah, I, just, I, I think the rest of the banks, let's look at JPM and see how they're doing. But, yeah, Wells Fargo... Uh, about a week after its earnings, deciding to, to have a good time. Yeah, a lot of these banks actually look strong. JP, JP Morgan trying to, trying to make a new high here, so this could be interesting. Lots of nice little looks here in these banks. And let's look at wow. AXP, who I know is not your best friend here, American Express, uh, on an American Express to the upside. Black card and check, ready to go to, to, to take a flight to the friendly skies. Do you skies. know why I have beef with them? The Hawaii thing. Oh, so you know about yeah. it. Okay, cool, yeah. Well, it was it just shafted me like while I'm on crazy. vacation. I have no buying power all of a sudden. It's like shutting shutting my buying power while I'm trading. You know, I'm just like, what the hell's going on over here? They fixed it and they were nice um, after that. All right, guys, um, everything's tanking here. 17-2 is incoming, guys. We are like nine points away from it. The Katina man hitting the bear emoji and more accurate he could not be. We are now almost 2%. Negative on the NQ on the day. What a big move down. These 100 point levels really haven't mattered all that much. 500 didn't matter. 400 didn't matter. 300 didn't matter. Does 200 matter? I don't know. I see a bit of a pattern here. So let's see exactly what we get. I'm looking to short AAPL if it makes its way up into the 10 period EMA on the five. I've got my dip trade or what not dip trade, I guess pop trade, you could call it that. But I'd be cognizant that we are in front of the 200 point level, because if we do, for whatever reason, find support at 17.2, then we, uh, we need to be careful with that. So um, let us start the lesson uh, du jour. We are talking, guys, today about the FOMO aspect of small cap trading. And I gotta tell you, this is a real thing. Um, let me just go all the way to the back here. There we go, it's a real thing. Um, especially because they move so quickly, they give you very little time to make decisions, but let's get to the lesson of the day. So fading a FOMO, a guide to avoiding emotional trading in small caps. Today's lesson tackles the ever-present danger zone of FOMO or the fear of missing out. This emotional roller coaster can be especially tempting in the fast-paced world of small cap momentum trading. Here's how to stay cool, collected, and... Um, yeah, sorry potentially avoid costly mis excuse me, mistakes. All right, so what is FOMO? We're just gonna give a very rudimentary uh, explanation as we always do with some of these terminologies. FOMO is the psychological phenomenon where your, your fear of missing out uh, on a profitable opportunity. You see a stock, in, in the context of obviously trading, you see a stock skyrocketing and feel pressure to jump in, ignoring your trading plan or the plan that you had kind of gotten together before the whole thing happened. And what ends up happening is you enter a potentially risky trade. So some of the dangers of FOMO are FOMO-driven trades can be disastrous. You might end up buying at inflated prices just before the correction comes in, or you chase a stock that's already up well past its peak. Bit of trouble there. Remember, emotions cloud judgment, and small cap stocks can be particularly volatile, causing more emotions to come into the whole thing. Again, the Godfather scene. I really want to harp on this. When he talked about his brother being the old Don and not a good Don, he ended up getting shot up on the uh, on the expressway there at the uh, the toll attendant. Sonny Corleone was just too angry of an individual. His anger clouded his judgment, and he couldn't make good decisions. His brother, Michael Corleone, not so much like that. He's a bit of a cool character. And here's a, a graphic illustration. Thanks to Dara for throwing this in. There you go. So your FOMO time uh, initiates. Oh, I'm panicking. Uh, initiates over here. <laughs> oh, I'm panicking. Because my screen went red. Right? Oh yeah, no, I, yeah. I like the, the delivery was good. Yeah, I know. I really. I'm panicking again. Anyway, I can see it over here, so it's all good, Raymond. Uh, FOMO time starts over here. Well, because the stock is on its way up, you're a couple of pennies, a couple of dollars in the money. You're feeling great and extreme positive sentiment. This is when you're most in the money. Then all of a sudden, you know, the curve, the price starts changing on you, and it starts correcting in a way that may not be to your liking. And then your initial f uh, feeling here after that positive excitement, extreme positive excitement is denial, initially denial, right? And then 
uh, you know, that denial sadly sets into panic. And that's when you really hear your judgment really gets clouded. So instead of punching out of the position and taking a little bit of a loss and reserving your capital, you, you know, you do things that emotions do, not, rash, not rational thinking does, which is maybe dollar cost average into a big loser, adding to more red, right? And then this is, uh, this is the worst part here, doom time and depression, and then the entire cycle starts yet again. I'm having issues with my monitor here. I think it keeps going in and out. I'll message Randy once, uh, once uh, I'm done with the lesson over here. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> um, so the whole cycle starts again. That is obviously un unless you can get your mind wrapped around the idea of trying to stay away from FOMO and sticking to your trading plan. Uh, this is what we're trying to avoid here. So how do, how do you fade the FOMO? And by fade, I mean obviously get rid of the FOMO. It's a joke. Uh, it's a, I guess, trading adage here. Here are some strategies to combat FOMO and to make rational trading decisions. First and foremost, discipline is key. Stick to your predefined trading plan. You should know your entry, uh, your exit, both your exits, your stop loss in case of something bad happens and where your profit taker is. You need to have three uh, clearly defined uh, positions before you get in. Entry, exit, and uh, stop, okay? Have a clear entry and exit based on technical analysis, not emotions. Wait for confirmation. Don't chase a stock that's already on a tear. Look for a pullback or consolidation zone or consolidation phase, I should say, after a strong price move before entering the trade and focus on value. This is more really uh, fundamental analysis related here. Uh, so we're not gonna harp on that. Here's how you develop a FOMO resistant mindset though. Building a strong trading mindset can help you resist FOMO by doing things like knowing your limits, set clear risk tolerance levels and stick to them. Don't invest more than you can afford to lose. You can do multiple different things. You can have a daily loss. Like I know on the floor over here, we all have daily losses or shutdown. But at home, you may not have that. And so you may feel free to over trade. Maybe by setting a maximum loss per day, you help avoid that a little bit, right? And also, where is your max loss for that particular stock? Your max loss per, per your uh, your stop losses for small caps shouldn't be the same as your small uh, your stop losses for large caps. They don't trade the same way, and so you shouldn't be having the same stops for them. And focus on the long term. Don't get caught up in the day to day noise. Develop a long term trading strategy and focus on achieving your overall investment goals and learn from your mistakes. Right? We all make them. Analyze your past FOMO trades and understand your triggers. What triggers you? Um, I know personally uh, when you know a position would go against me that I had this crazy conviction behind. I had this habit of DCAing until you really got into trouble. And so that's something that I've tried to avoid. That's just my personal experience. What were your mistakes that you kept repeating over and over? Do you know what they are? Have you gone past and looked at what you did wrong? I mean, a lot of it is easy to forget because you're so emotional during the time. So you may forget some of this stuff. Journaling definitely helps with respect to remembering those mistakes. And consider the risks, right? It's easy to be swept up in the rallies and easy uh, to get super hyped up. That often accompanies the small caps because they're so volatile and, and fun. But make sure to remember some of the inherent risks like halts, like the one that I got into yesterday, or sudden price swings like the one that affected me yesterday involved with trading small caps. And here are some additional tips. Take breaks, step away from the charts periodically to clear your mind, clear your head. You know, Sean does his walk and talk. Uh, we all have our other, you know, little tidbits that we do there. Talk it out as well, talk to other traders. Uh, we're blessed at this firm to be able to have so many different traders on the floor that we can bounce ideas off. And we have the big kahunas who give us great life advice with respect to, you know, to sticking in the trading game long term but you may not have that at home. So make sure you're interacting with people in the chat, joining a Discord, whatever you have to do. Just talk it out with other like-minded traders. People who don't understand trading are not gonna be able to give you that great of advice. Practice makes perfect also. Paper trading allows you to experiment with different tra trading strategies. Are you a dip trader? Are you a momentum trader? Are you a range trader? What does uh, your personality like, into what's, what's best suited for your personality, I guess is what I'm trying to say, okay? And also put things into perspective. If you miss a big move, try to put it aside, 
put aside the FOMO, uh, consider the potential joy of missing out. The Jomo, I always love this. You may have missed out on a profitable opportunity, but you also may have avoided a potential huge reversal that would have eaten away at your profits. Just remember that. And last but not least, FOMO is a natural human emotion, but it doesn't have to control your trading uh, decisions by developing discipline, a strong mindset, and utilizing the tips above, you can fade the FOMO, Adara. I like that too. And one thing I want to say too is um, FOMO doesn't always come in one package. I was talking about this earlier. I was like, oh, I don't feel like I have FOMO. And then I ended up only scalping out part of my position on NVIDIA because I wanted more, because I was scared of missing out. So my FOMO manifested in a different way. So I think make sure you have your FOMO check and understand, you know, sometimes here we'll do a spice check. Sharif will have me do a spice <laughs> check with the meals. Make sure you do a FOMO check uh, because FOMO is not always going to manifest as rapidly buying into a trade. Sometimes it can be a little bit more of a situation of you just don't leave when you should because you get a little bit greedy. You want more of that, that money, money, money. You want more of the, the hot dog cannon. And it's just, um, and it just, you know, you kind of have to, to be cognizant of that. Also, so NVIDIA, uh, we had a short, we, we tried to short this here because I noticed we were, we kind of came up to that level, rejected a little bit. I wanted to take a bit of that short. Uh, we lost a couple of pennies on this. It's okay. We're slightly down on um, the market, but still green, on, or not down on the market. We're slightly down on the day, still green on the name. I tried to take this again, though, because I noticed this was that area I had this short earlier. We come up to 70s again, and I was more patient this time than I was in this short. I watched. I waited for a couple failures of 70s. I said, Adara, you know this level failed before. Get involved. So I did get involved. Um, I, I'd i like to see us break 50s. We're really struggling with this this break below 3250s. Um, and let's see what level that corresponds to on NVIDIA. It's a, oh, it's it's because it's an 807. So it's it's a it's a it's a dollar level, which is maybe why this is such an area on NVDL. Not sure, but I, you know you always have to if you're going to trade stuff like NVDL or Tesl, you always have to keep an eye on what their big siblings are doing in the Meg Seven. So that's what I'm trying to do here. NVDL, let's go. NVD, let's go. I guess. But I want to see what happens here on this NVDL. Going to be cognizant. You know what? I want to be able to look at other stuff for people, so I'm just going to punch out of this here. Yeah. Take my 10 pennies. Please just punch. We could have dropped a little bit lower, but that's okay. We're just trying to take the trades that we feel comfortable with. And NVIDIA, I'm always a little bit more comfortable if I'm scalpy. In general, I'm more comfortable if I scalp. And I also think that goes back to what Sharif was saying, too, with regards to um, making sure you know what kind of trader you are. Yeah. And everything. Well, you kind of you kind of figured that out as you went. So I don't yeah. think you you jumped into anything. You really yeah. took your time and figured out what um, kind of trader you want it to be. All right, Apple just uh, broke into that 164.50 area, broke the 10 period, and didn't quite make it up to the 20 period. So um, right back down, that's an ugly looking candle there, if I've ever seen one, big topping tail candle. The other thing I want to mention, we're awfully close, 17.2. Uh, and so anybody who was looking at the overnight low and saw exactly what happened there at, um, what time was that yesterday? 21 central time, so 10 p.m. Eastern time. Look where we got to. So we closed up the day yesterday at 17.5. Let's just call it 17.550, okay? And then by the overnight low, we got to 17.181. Well, we are almost right back at that level. And even though we retraced all the way back into Friday, into yesterday's close by 8.30, we have now almost come all the way back down into 17.181. But I've been watching what we've been doing here at 17.2. It looks as if we're getting a bit of a hold at 17.2, not unlike the difference that we got at 17.3. So we're a little bit higher than 17.3 when we held above it. We had this one candle come down into that 17.307. We haven't touched 17.2 quite yet, but we're still below all these moving averages on the future. So I'm not inclined to take any sort of long here whatsoever. But yeah, keep in mind that we have been dancing in front of that 17.2 for quite some time. Now there is no discernible uptrend on any of these MAG7 names, maybe a little bit here on NVDA as it now curls back into that 8.10 area, but it's still below the 10 period. What I wanna see though, is if this 8.15 area on NVDA, and I won't trade NVDA, I'll trade NVDL, but if we curl back above 810, above 812, where the 20 period is, into 815, well, this 815 area is staring at me in the face because we troughed out there earlier on around 1030, 1045, and we had a bit of a consolidation low there on NVDA. So keep that in mind if you are looking for possible trade here on these MAG7 names. Let's have a look. Now at some of these small cappers that we were talking about, we were talking about TWG. I see a, to a ton of topping tail candles here. That is not a good look for 
um, a small cap gapper. That usually is the look before the short comes in and a big huadunk down, typically a V-shaped a v retracement here. I'm assuming this one requires uh, shorts to be bought. Let's find out. Let's just put like a tiny amount of shares and say go short $4, $4.25. Let's see, so the sh it gets rejected which means that we need to buy shorts for this, obviously. So TWG, you've got to secure shorts for that. But these topping till candles, um, you know, so far trying to hold above three. There goes three. So the move is coming in here to the downside on TWG. This one IPO'd a few days ago, uh, but presenting us with opportunities for trades. AGBA, I mentioned this one not too long ago, saying that it reclaimed the volume weighted average price right back below it again. So not going to trade this one, but INDO, True to form has reclaimed VWAP and it is at that pre-market or sorry, the IB high there, right at five bucks. This one though, looking awfully like a head and shoulder. So maybe a short through four and a half here, which is where the neckline is heading, hanging out. But you're gonna have to see a retracement off this level for that right shoulder to develop here on INDO. We'll keep, we'll keep eyes on it, obviously. I'm just gonna jump in because I see a pattern. But, Interesting stuff here on the small gappers. As I look up, I see a new one coming into the foray here, NKGN, 51%. What is this? Let's load it up and find it? out. No. Oh, we'll find out right now. It'll tell us. I remember. NKGN. Uh, yeah. Next uh, gen biotech. So you were not wrong. Um, what is this doing? It's done about half a million shares. Careful, it hasn't done too much shares yet, but the volume just started coming in at 12.42, so this is about three minutes ago. Uh, this one talked yesterday about Biotech announces upcoming presentation of their cell therapy in neurodegenerative disease. Okay, so this one has a catalyst from yesterday, but for whatever reason, it just started moving now, up 50%. Be careful with this one, though. It is a little bamboozling. Havana Woody, Sharif, the other kind of FOMO is buying back too soon on a pullback after taking a win. Couldn't agree with you more, Havana Woody. That's one quick way to give away your profits there. Make sure it's sound technically. Uh, sell, Philly, I don't know. Can someone talk about Palantir? Sure, let's have a look at PLTR. Uh, it's not one that I don't think the Big Kahunas traded Palantir today, but let's have a look at it. No, they did not. So let's have a look. Here we go. So Palantir, obviously a bit of a downtrend for a while now, uh, trying to hold up above 20. Uh, we're below all the uh, the averages here. I mean, we're curling up, I guess, off that 20 and a half. Some topping tail candles coming in to that 20 and a half area, all getting bought up. We'll see what happens here, but I don't really have a read on Palantir other than to say, you know, we were really holding up the lower end of the Bollinger Bands. We were making lower highs and lower lows on both the price action and RSI. So there was confluence between both of them there. Um, now we're curling right up a bit, getting out of that oversold territory on RSI, I guess on PLTR. No catalyst today for Palantir, so I'm not really inclined to trade it. Manuel Palma, AMC testing highs with some volume. I know you were looking at AMC earlier, right? Yeah, I'm still looking at AMC, but first we're gonna take a look and thank our lovely sponsor. Thank you so much. This part of the show brought by Pan Dimensional. And look at this website. Like I'm having so much fun playing around um, with this. Uh, so Pan Dimensional, with Pan Dimensional researching and strategy in the stock market does not have to be difficult. With your personalized AI investing co-pilot from Pan Dimensional, you can easily discover stocks and effortlessly test and execute your trading strategies. Get quick and digestible stock market insights with Pandimensional's AI chatbot and back test and forward test strategies with Pandimensional's AI simulator all on a beginner friendly platform. Try it now for free. So thank you very much to Pandimensional. And now without further ado, Manuel Palma, AMC is actually an esteemed member of my side chart right now. <laughs> so we'll talk about that uh, in a moment. Cause I was trying to get, I mentioned this earlier, I wanted I wanted 320s, cause look at how well this held this resistance then support. Then we tried to test this again and I don't get involved cause I kind of was like, oh, maybe we're petering out a little bit. I should have gotten involved. Uh, and this is one case I stand by why I didn't. And that was because we were a little, it's a little bit taciturn, a little bit harder to read. Then it decides to break to the upside. And I'm like, okay, do your thing 21. AMC, the popcorn popping to the upside here. Uh, really nice look, higher highs, higher lows. That's, that's my whole technical read on this, but absolutely keep an eye on that 320 level. Three, 319, 320, I think if we break below that, given how intense this area was earlier, I think things could get really spicy. 
very spicy. So let's see what happens here on AMC. Also super happy I covered NVDL where I did. We took our 10 pennies and then, uh, oh, it's actually, NVDA had a bit more of a pop, I think, or maybe I, I could interpret it differently. We only popped a few pennies here, but I'm still happy I'm out of the short. I wanna wait and see what we do. I don't really have a read on this right now though, so I'm gonna stay out uh, right now just uh, after those last two NVDL trades, one positive, one a little bit red. We're, we're slightly red in the day, but we're basically flat. And we're always excited to see what the op trading opportunities hold, trying not to uh, rush into anything here. The queues, like literally sitting so pretty on the telephone line here of this 9 EMA. This could be an interesting point here. I wanna see uh, what happens because we do want all the smoke. Also Palantir, we were just mentioning Palantir there for self-ability. And um, I wanna take the short. I want to take this short because I like that we're kind of ducking below this 90 MA. Yep. I was watching this area earlier. We like 57s. We take 57s. We short. Um, and I'm going to be basically, what do I want for my stop? We're going to get, we're going to give this to 62s. We're going to give this that wick there because that was a pretty interesting wick. So I, I want to give that its space. We're risking about five pennies. Trying to make, what's the bottom of this? 49. We're trying to make about... Um, eight pennies, so I'm okay with that. Like I said, someone uh, yesterday was asking in a super chat, I believe it was Pop and Schwartz, about uh, figuring out your risk to reward ratios. And I think it really depends on a person. I usually don't use a ratio. I'll just say, as long as I'm trying to make more than I'm risking, I'm comfortable with it. So you have to find the strategy that works for you. I'm comfortable with this strategy. And with that in mind as well, we know we know how I am in terms of, in terms of how I plan the trades. If we get to, to 48, I'll take them out here. But if we struggle a little bit earlier, we shall scalp. So we're gonna have to see what happens here. Um, Palantir trying to be a little bit spicy. Uh, I'm not a fan of spice. I do want all the smoke, but but maybe not the spice in this market here. So Palantir, <laughs> if you wanna make a move back to the downside, please just dang punch, I will be. And it looks like this actually might be reversing long a little bit, but that's okay. I don't have a reason to leave yet. Trying to stay calm, stay cool. And again, not trying to trade PNL. Trying to trade based on ideas I like, and I did like this idea, so I'm gonna have to stick with it. Apple back into 165, guys. So let's see what we get here. Do we reject that level? I'm short Apple trying for that 165 rejection. I'm gonna give it a, a couple of more shekels into the volume weighted average price, but I'm keeping my eye also on the market. And I was looking here for a, a 17.250 rejection, and it didn't come in. So we're retracing at least a little bit here on the market in general. So I'm gonna look to, okay, so I'm gonna punch out of this Apple position because it looks really strong here. I'll look to get short again, possibly at 165 and a quarter, 165 and a third. That's where the VWAP is hanging out at the moment, but you're seeing a nice market curl at these levels. So uh, we'll have to wait and see exactly what we get on these bad boys. Uh, but uh, yeah, interesting look here on the market in general. Apple just skyrocketing up off that 164.07, a dollar off the bottom there. But I, I'm not really convinced in this Apple long. But you had you had to think that you know there were gonna be algos. I want to push this above 165 because that had been the local resistance or yeah support level I should say. And I was thinking maybe we probably close above 165 on the day, but I'm gonna be looking short on Apple if we get this 165 and a quarter, 165 and a third. What you can do is you can place uh, your, your out maybe above the half dollar. To me though, the right out would be above this high over here, this high that we made at 1050, which is at 165 let's say three quarters and two thirds in and around that area there. But Apple on the way up, look at this, into that one quarter, uh, 165 and a quarter area. And you're seeing a couple of nice bounces here, even softy coming possibly into that 400. So there's another possible trade to be had there. You could look for that 400 rejection on MSFT. It was initially an area of support, but if the market's gonna curl back up here, then it doesn't really matter 400 on this or VWAP on that, it's gonna keep going. So watch out here for a market reversal. Do we have any like auctions or Fed speakers? Or um, like that? We have the Baker Hughes oil rig count at okay. one. Okay. And that's it. It's so been we'll a really light keep, day. We'll keep eye on oil. Oil's up like 0.44 right now. Nothing really doing too, too much there. Obviously the belligerencies overnight had an effect on oil, but I think it came right back down. All right, so Apple's at that 165 and a fifth. So let's keep eyes on AAPL here because it is at the volume weighted average price are awfully close to it. Be an interesting short if we hold up at these levels, Adira. Yeah, I think um, 
you know, speaking of shorts, and this is what I talk about. You know, I, I know I say, I throw around this word a lot, the viciousness and the swiftness. This is what I mean. So we had this kind of pop into to 62, and then we kind of fizzled out, right? And I love, I love that that's where we rejected. That was my area I was going to get out, right? Because of this little wick earlier. That was completely arbitrary. It was, well, not completely arbitrary. I say that, but it, it was a wick I liked, but anyone could have used whatever level they wanted, right? But I, I always found it interesting. I picked this level because of that wick, and then PLTR ended up actually having this weird confluence and this weird relationship to that wick. So it's always nice when that stuff works out, I think, right? You know, I talk about my micro ranges and my weird little lines that I draw on my chart, but uh, <laughs> when they come into fruition, that is always sweet indeed. I, I am noticing we do have this little curl here, the shelf at the bottom, which makes me think this could potentially be a long. But I, I did, I like the short. I got into the short for a reason. And if we do flip long, I, I might use the 62 area support. We'll see. We'll see. But I, I don't want to make any assumptions. I just want, you know, I don't have a Palantir or a crystal ball. All I have is this Palantir <laughs> chart. And right now, look at how much we are struggling with this level. To me, this uh, we do look a skosh, um, a skosh bearish here on this little candle. So I'm going to keep an eye on this, especially with the confluence of the 9 EMA, which as we know is a level I like maybe a little too much. So we're going to wait and see what happens. Um, I can't believe it is already 1255. So we're going to start the lesson again a little Sorry, bit. Sorry, just want to cover yeah. Apple. What Ooh. a rejection off the volume weighted average price on AAPL here. We got that right at top wick and that's where we're going to cover right there. Uh, so I was a little early to the party. I tried to take 165 and I ended up getting cut up a little bit. The real level was the volume weighted average price. Look at that topping tail candle on the five minute. Let me just show you this real quick. That is, uh, that's an interesting level right there on AAPL. It comes right into VWAP and down it goes. But maybe it might retrace a little bit. So that's why I was able to scalp this trade real quick. Uh, nice. 165 and a third rejection on Apple. Um, also, that 400 came in on Softy as well. So look at this candle over here. Where do we get to? 399.89. So 11 pennies off a $400 name is awfully close. So you can, you can just say we touched 400. 11 pennies is it is what it is. And then it gives you a nice one dollar move down, not a 30 penny move Apple uh, on Softy. So. Now, whether or not we end up rejecting 400 on the day, uh, that's a different story, but there was something to be had at least for that specific micro trade there. AAPL, MSFT, I guess you can't really call them predictable levels, but you know, there's something that we had our eye on. So we'll keep eyes on both Apple and Microsoft because if 400 and 165 and a third keep rejecting, then we'll keep taking it. Uh, yeah, it's okay. I didn't mean to put pressure on you. I'm, just, I'm looking at the, the chat over here. Uh, let's see what people are up to. What are you guys looking at in the chat right now? Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Let's see what we're talking about. I'm just looking for some names that you guys have put in the chat. Smita Patel, CXAI, any thought? Is it is it doing things on the day today? Let's find out. I feel like this one has been calm a little bit lately because the AI names have kind of chilled out. Whoa. Not a bad look, uh, Smita, 12 and a quarter percent. Who could say uh, no to that, especially if you were along this name and bag holding, right? Let's look at this daily chart so we can figure out some levels. So this is the daily on CXAI. You can see kind of hovered at that buck for a long time and then really got its feet under it in, looks like late February there. So interesting level here that we opened up at Smita. The fact that we held that three and a quarter, I would suggest to you is no accident. It is the top end of the range from February 27th all the way until April 1st. We were really hard pressed to number one, be able to close above three. And when we did close above three, it was at three and a quarter that we were really topping out at. And then obviously we got into seven bucks on uh, the first of this month, retracing down now. But lo and behold, we're holding up at the previous area, cons previous consolidation area top. So it's not a bad look there. You're holding up at the 50 as we have been for, I guess, since February 26th when we uh, reclaimed the 50 period moving average. Intraday though, how do you trade this? Let's look at the five. Okay, so the five not showing me too, too much here. Let's flip to the one. Okay, so this one, what is this one doing? Retracements into the 20, which is the yellow solid line on my chart. 
have been plenty of plenty. The deeper retracements have come into the 50, the more shallow or more perfunctory retracements all into the 20, which is the yellow line. The 50 is the red line on my chart. We just printed day's highs, meet at 363. Look for a retracement into either the 20 or the 50 to get long. I would suggest to you try not to punch near the highs on this name. It is a bit of a bamboozler, Adira. Yeah, I mean, I've just been watching kills here. We're basically flat on this. I'm just trying to stay calm um, and let it do its thing. 21, we're going to take out two-thirds of the position here around this earlier kind of top and nice. turn area, 52, 53, saving pieces for dreams. But the dreams, uh, they end very quickly. They're getting around 50s. Again, like, I find if I just scalp, things go better. So I'm just sticking with my scalp levels. If we run into a little bit of resistance earlier, I will get out there. Um, what, what else here? Oh, yeah, NVIDIA. how could I forget about NVIDIA and her little cousin, NVDL? Um, or little sister. So I do, I think as a scalp, I like this. You have like the bottom here about 63, top about 83. If I get the timing right, I do like the idea of kind of scalping or like, you know, cross country skiing, like in and out of this NVDL to the upside. I think this is kind of, or, or to the downside. But I think right now with the cues kind of turning up, I, I would rather take this long. I don't have any entries on these right now. I'm just kind of waiting, letting it bake, letting it cook. I have it on the side chart for my NVDL. And of course, I also have my NVDA in the side chart. So if I see those two doing things I like, we will be getting involved in NVDL. Palantir with a, a baby pot. But again, nothing, nothing that concerns me, nothing to make me leave quite yet. We do have the lesson in a couple seconds here. But I want to take a look as well at AT&T for Elon in the chat saying that um, AT&T swing. I actually like AT&T on the daily chart here because I like this double bottom at 16.29. And we'll have to see kind of what we do if we, it looks like we might be able to break this top at 16.42 with that move up in La Spy. We're gonna have to wait and see, but yeah, TNT, AT&T, a nice look. Let's take a look at the daily chart for that swing look. Oh. Oh yeah, these last few days, this is a nice swing. Look at this kind of solid bottom here at 16.10. Yeah, congrats to you. Don't know where you got in, but that's a nice look for sure. And also, it's interesting, right now, we're kind of coming into that previous bottom at 16.40. If we're able to, to kind of break above that, that could be a nice little turn of things for, um, for our pal AT&T on the daily chart. We got out of Palantir, we broke up a little bit higher here. Um, Palantir was not our pal. <laughs> not not my palantir right now. Of but that's course. okay. That's okay. Um, AT and T uh, trying to. I, I think if we reject here, that could be interesting because nice. I think that was a clear area of support earlier. Um, how goes Tesla? Just got into it right now. I, I kept looking at these uh, topping till candles in to the 20 and 50, which are kind of overlapping right now. So I figured I'd try my hand at this in in case these candles were indicative of uh, you know selling pressure or buyers fizzling out here. So we'll see exactly what we get on TSLA. I'm also cognizant of the fact that we're almost back at 17.3. So that 17.2 hold ended up at least being valid for now. However, though, uh, this is the area I don't, I, I get 17.3 is a 100 point level. And, you know, typically I look at these 100 point levels, but this is the area that's really getting a lot of my attention. It's 17.350. And that's because it was a lot of action through here. Um, at 17.350 initially as a level of support when we came into that at 10.25. And then once we broke it at 11.15, we started using it as resistance. Look at all these wicks into that 17.350, which also happens to be uh, support level two on the pivots. Don't know if that's a happy accident or that was uh, you know meant to be. But anyway, keeping my eye on the 17.3 retracement, looking for a possible short, Hence why I got into that TSLL short, obviously with uh, Tesla looking at the topping tail candles as well. Now, I also want to mention that both Softy and AAPL came into those levels that we liked. So AAPL coming right back into that 15 and a quarter, 15 and a third, where the volume weighted average price is. Uh, initially, you had a nice rejection off this candle, but it's right back there again. We'll see whether or not it is a short there again. And MSFT right back into 400, like we were talking about, former area of support, now acting as resistance. We'll see if the second time is a charm, or maybe even, yeah, second time is a charm here on MSFT uh, as it also comes into that key area of uh, resistance. So at least I feel it's resistant. Also looking at Google. So Google was awfully strong today and I really liked 
this 154 and a third. And again, it happens to be support level one on pivots, but there was a lot of price action there that helped, that made me believe in this level. We finally gave up the ghost at, seven, at 154 and a third once the market started tanking, but look at us retrace right back in. We're at 154 right now, minus two pennies. That 154 and a third is not that far away. So I wanna see exactly what Google does at these levels. Now, Google's a less volatile trade than taking Microsoft, for example, off 400. The spread will be tighter. It moves a little bit less aggressively. So this could be another interesting trade here on Google, on goggles, as the OB, the one that Kenobi likes to say. So keep that uh, look in mind. Keep 17.3 in mind. Keep 400 on Softy in mind. Keep Apple VWAP in mind. And keep 154 and a third in mind on goggles, Adara. Yeah, I am. Yes, yeah, so I go to the Palantir. I'm going to go to the lesson, but AMC, I am. This is, this is tough because I do like that we're kind of bouncing a little bit here off that previous area of resistance. And the last time we did that, that worked out. The other thing though, is I know AMC does AMC things. So I don't want it to get like all swept up in the Fair. madness, right? Especially going into the lessons. So I'm gonna keep it in my side chart. I'll punch in if I see something I really like, but I'm gonna go for without further ado, we'll get to the lesson for now. Congrats though to everybody in CNBC. I almost said CNBC. Hey MC, because <laughs> I know there are some you of you here CMBS. in our lovely chat. CNBS. <laughs> also, um, worth noting too, we do have a podcast. Check that out on Saturday. I don't know why I was just thinking about that, but check that one out. Lots of fun stuff there. Um, always a good discussion with Brendan and Sean. But for now, let's talk about fading the FOMO. So what, what is FOMO? We talk, you know, it's a, it's a psychological phenomenon where you fear missing out on a profitable opportunity. Also, while I was doing some notes for this, I noticed there's also FUD, which is fear, uncertainty, doubt. That's another kind of similar one used almost interchangeably. And FOMO can manifest a couple different ways. I think the main one is that usually you see a stock skyrocketing and feel pressure to jump in. So you ignore your trading plan and potentially enter a risky trade. I believe it was Havana Woody in the chat mentioning a different form of FOMO, which is when you, you make some profits and then you you re-enter a trade because you have your winnings and you feel good. I also, I think another form of FOMO that I suffer from sometimes is only like staying in the trade longer than you should. So I scalp some out and then I don't scalp everything out because I don't want to miss out in a bigger move. So FOMO can manifest in different ways um, and just be aware of how it affects you because it does affect people a little bit differently. What about the dangers of FOMO? So FOMO driven, driven trades can be in a word disastrous. So you might end up buying at, at an inflated price just before a correction or chasing a stock that's already past its peak. And so you want to remember that emotions can cloud judgment. So stick with your technicals, especially in a small cap stock, because they can be particularly volatile. So what are some of the emotional pulls that a FOMO cycle can take? Here we go. So we have this move up. It's FOMO time. Extremely positive sentiment hits. This is the highest risk, because this might be when you end up entering. Then it starts to drop and you start to deny like, oh, it'll be fine. It'll be okay. Then we panic. Then we feel doom. Then you acknowledge you have to sell. This is when the depression sets in. And I, I've been here for some of my earlier trades in some of these mega tech stocks before I, I got a better sense of levels and, and waiting for the points of entry. Then the, we drop to the downside and then you're like, hey, there's a dip buy opportunity. And then we, we see the FOMO cycle rinse and repeat. And of course, this is a little bit more of a bullish cycle. It could happen, I'm sure, uh, with bearishness as well. So just wanted to show that. I think it's kind of an interesting look at some of the psychological impacts of, um, of the FOMO. Also, um, thank you to Scott Thompson letting us know that there's a White House press briefing at 1.30, so that maybe could move the markets. Keep an eye on that. So thank you very much, uh, Bitcoin Trader, for the kind words. First week of live has certainly, certainly been a lot, and I think I've learned a lot. Uh, but how do you fade the FOMO? So here are some strategies that we can talk about to combat FOMO and make rational trading decisions. So for one, you really want to be disciplined. You will have to stick to your predefined trading plan, have clear entry and exit points based on technical analysis and not emotions. You also want to wait for confirmation, right? So don't chase a stock that's already on a tear. Make sure that you're looking for pullbacks or consolidation phases after a strong price move before entering a trade. Uh, focus on value. Don't just buy because everybody else is. It's like when, you know, like people will say, oh, like if, if so-and-so told you to jump off a cliff, would you do it? Mm -hmm. That's the same type of thing. It's like, don't, don't get involved just because everybody else is doing it, right? Remember, uh, remember when you're a kid, you're like, oh, well, everybody did that thing. And then your mom's like, oh, well, if, if that person did this, would you do it? So keep that in mind. You have to stick to your strategy. Everybody's going to trade differently. I think that's one really cool thing about what we have here in this community is everyone is going to maybe sometimes be in the same trades, but have different, uh, I hate that the word is impetuses, but... 
impetuses or reasons for getting into that trade, <laughs> or or people yeah, will have too close, eh? right? Yeah, it's too close. Or someone will have like, for example, you know, a, a reason to enter, and someone else can acknowledge that it looks nice, but it's just not the trade for them, right? So make sure that you're taking a trade for your own reason. Also, make sure you're doing um, sub focusing on value, doing your own research. This is more for long terms, but I think with small caps, it's still apt because sometimes we'll have a small cap. Uh, Rail Vision RVSN is the most recent example I can think of where we did have that move up, and I know some people were considering this one long term, but unfortunately it did end up dropping a little bit lower. So I think that's an interesting point there as well. Develop a FOMO-like mindset is also, she was laughing at the way I pressed the keyboard there, <laughs> but you have to, to find a FOMO resistant mindset. So have a strong mindset to help you resist and fade the FOMO. You have to know your limits. Setting clear risk tolerance levels and sticking to them can help you avoid FOMO because you don't want to invest more than you can afford to lose. Also, focus on long-term strategies. Don't get caught up in the little day-to-day -day noise. Develop a long-term trading strategy or minute-to-minute -minute or second-to-second -second noise, I guess, too, if you're talking intraday, as we often do here. You also want to focus on achieving your overall investment goals, not what everybody else is doing in these markets. Also, make sure to learn from mistakes. We all make them. You have to analyze past FOMO trades to understand your triggers and develop coping mechanisms. Also consider the, the risk because it's, it's easy to be swept up in these rallies that often accompany small cap stocks. That was what I always talk about with my infamous Axla trade on the sim where we got a little bit chopped up there, lost in the sauce, and ended up in a down hold. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a little bit of a, a moment for me, right? But, but it's easy to get swept with these moments, and that's why you want to make sure that you remember some of the inherent risks involved, like halts, like sudden price swings, especially involved when you're trading small caps. Here's some additional tips to talk about. So make sure that you take breaks sometimes. You know, we have, uh, Sharif was talking about how sometimes he hangs out in the couch in the back. Neil yes. will listen to music. Yes. Sean will go on his walk, talk, talk. Uh, you have to have a find a way to deal with the stress of trading, clear your head, and avoid getting too lost in the sauce with these markets. You also sometimes maybe want to talk it out. Talk it out. We do this all the time on the oh, desk yeah. here with other traders on the floor. Um, talk about what happened. Talk about your trading ideas. Talk about your, your actual trades that you made with friends or mentors to gain a fresh perspective and avoid emotion trading decisions but practice is gonna make perfect here right so as someone who spent a lot of time in the sim I can definitely attest paper trading helps you define your strategy refine your strategy and hone your skills in an environment that is relatively risk-free also you want to put things into perspective remember we have FOMO but also as Fabian Ramin once put into a poll here we have JOMO which is a joy <laughs> of missing out you know maybe you miss out on a profit movement but also you could have missed in a down halt or something that didn't go according to plan and that's why you have to remember JOMO as well sometimes you can, you can, you know, just be grateful and, and understand that not everything is going to go this way, and so maybe you don't want to add in. Um, also, FOMO is a natural um, human emotion, but it does not have to control your trading decisions. Understand what FOMO means for you and develop discipline and a strong mindset and utilize maybe some of the tips we gave. Also, this is very kind from Honest Abe. I deal with the stress by watching you guys, LOL. <laughs> I mean, I'm happy to be there for you. And you know what? Honestly, I think this one really great thing about this community is we have a group of people that, that is kind of there for you that understands because they're all trading these markets here as well. Also, there was another comment here. I um, Yeah, 1320 Wolf saying any green candle is like, a shiny object and I think that's certainly uh, the case sometimes in these markets so that's why you have to make sure your FOMO doesn't set in and you don't get like oh squirrel like running around trying to trying to chase the, the, these candles to the upside don't go chasing waterfalls as I am always saying shout out to TLC yes man how are you doing doing all right watching the future as we kind of wick shimmy dance with 17.3 uh precipitated me to get into this T triple Q short uh, you know, I feel like we're wicking off 17-3 uh, and and not claiming it. So I don't know, man. If there was going to be a dead cap, a time for a dead cap bounce off a 100-point level, I just love it for it to be now. Uh, so we'll see exactly what we get here. But we're we're using uh, we're using the NQs levels, but we're trading the uh, T triple Q. So sometimes there's a bit of a, a mismatch between the levels. You try to you try to figure out what price is which on each chart, but it's not always an exact science. So keep your eye out for a break and take of the actual 17.3 level. Uh, you know, not just a quick wick in there. You're looking for decisive buying to show you that we're gonna blow through that level. So keep that in mind. Also still holding the TSLL short um, into this bad boy. Shout out to the Katina man. We know that this dude has been holding, where, where are you short Tesla, Katina man? 149.80, the Katina man has been holding Tesla, but I'm assuming you, 
He's looking now at a firm short, guys. A F R M short. Keep that in mind. Uh, we we were talking about that bad boy this morning uh, because now they're charging interest on some of their loans. Prior they hadn't. It was interest free, and the only way they really made money is if you missed payments. They charge you like an administrative fee and stuff like that. Now they're charging you interest between five to fifteen percent, which is good for their margins. Yeah, of course, no question about it. I mean, I find that. <laughs> Uh, so shout out there to the Katina man with the new Affirm idea. If you're following along Sean and Neil's trades, you need to be subscribed to More Trader TV because you're going to see their trades up there all day long. As long as the markets are open, their trades are going to be up there. And you're not going to just see their trades. You're going to see all the stuff that Adara does there in the morning, all the headlines, all the tickers, all the stuff you need to know, the economic calendar, who's talking when, who's dropping hotlines where, all that stuff on More Trader TV. Make sure you are subs excuse me, subscribed th to that channel and a viewer of it every day. Otherwise, it's really no point. So that's the look there. Now, let's see what everybody else is talking about. I'm in uh, T triple Q short. I'm in uh, TSLL short. We'll see how they manifest. I've been watching 17.3 on the future. That's what's caught me into the short. Let's see how it all works out there. Oh, by the way, did you notice Netflix added another couple of percentage points to its down day? Eight and a half percent now. This is, yeah, this is something Ooh. else. Whoo, Netflix. Yeah, I guess people were not adding this one to its watch list right now. This is a, I mean, and I mean that metaphorically because of, of Netflix. But yeah, we're trying to kind of curl back up here on this 90 MA, like a, like a couple of these NQ names are doing. That's also what I'm watching out for. Uh, let me let me actually look at these Netflix levels. What's interesting too is we're kind of coming into a level this 359, right? So that was a, a base earlier. Could it become resistance? We're gonna have to find out. This is definitely a bit of a bit boozling chart. We had this double bottom here earlier at about 555, kind of curling to the upside, bouncing off that 90 MA, but also coming into that earlier support area of 559. Will we do it? Will we make it above? I feel like a sports announcer, but sometimes <laughs> these markets just move so darn fast you feel like you're you're part of be part of the game or something. It's all it's all moving quickly, right? So you have to. You we, that's why I always say I talk quickly because the markets move quickly. Um, but yeah, NVDL here. This is what I. This is what I and wanted. I was gonna watch it for 87s. Uh, if we recover here, I'll get out. But that, that this is kind of the, the type of trade I'm taking. I still have my scalp ideas, but I'm also willing to see if we get any lower. The impetus for this short, and to stop using that word, was that we had these uh, this kind of tapering off to the downside. The cues were moving to the downside. Shout out to Sharif for getting that. Right Ooh. down it goes, baby. We called that 17.3. Let's cover a little bit here uh, because, well, it was kind of obvious what it was doing there. Uh, the wick shimmy dance into 17.3, so we'll, we'll cover a little bit on that. Sorry to interrupt you there. It's okay. I was just making weird sounds and like pumping my fist weirdly. So nice. sorry for the little. I hopefully that the the little squeal there wasn't too loud. I apologize, guys. But yeah, so I got out of that entirely. It was a scalp. I was I was interested to see what we did at 87. So even just being able to take um, 75 here, I was pleased to punch about. I was gonna give this trying to get about 13 pennies. I was gonna risk about 10. So again, my risk to reward ratios are a little bit weird to mathematically uh, figure out. But I think of it as fractions, right? As long as I'm trying to reward myself with more than I'm risking, I'm okay. So we took 25 pennies on that NBDL. Please just punch. Uh, let's see, yeah, because the thing is too, is I think it's, it's, it's I like this one as well, because I'm just looking, seeing what NVDA is doing on my side chart, and if I like what it's doing, I will pull up my NVDL and get involved. Also, IBIT. Uh, we, we were in a bit of IBIT <laughs> earlier. And um, yeah, I want to see, see, I was going to get involved in this, but it was also right before the lesson. I like this 55 little trough. Um, but then we dropped right below and I said, Dara, you do not want to be hanging out in a Bitcoin trade while you are, are dropping hot lines. No, <laughs> no, ma'am. But yeah, this IBIT was rangy earlier and then we broke below. Happy I got out of this right where I needed to. But if IBIT wants to range again, I was singing earlier asking the market for ranges. So if it's going to give me some, I have no problem with that. I was looking at a firm earlier too. Um, Ooh, this is nice. Right. I was looking at this area for a firm for the short, the, the 3125, but I mean, now now we're a little bit higher, so we're gonna have to wait and see. I know Sean was saying this, and that kind of reminded me that I was looking at it 
um, earlier. So I, I am trying to say, I, I would like to clarify this was what I did have my eye on earlier, but Sean mentioning it did kind of remind me. Um, I was looking at this while, while Neil was dropping hot lines earlier. <laughs> I started saying that like you, you, our language, I feel like we've like- Well, I mean, we're spending three hours multiplied by five. We spend actually more time because we're together in the morning as well. So there's gonna be, I take lines from Neil, I take lines from Sean, it's just, it's communal around here. I mean, uh, the, the, the language is gonna be communal. Language. Um, <laughs> Communal language, right? Uh, I'm long TWG right at 360. The whole idea here is to use this previous area of resistance as support. Right now, we got a beak wetter there at 370. It popped into 380. I have my profit taker at 387. Let's see if it makes it up there. Um, the whole, I, again, you know, you, you, I, I talked about this level before I got into it. I let you know that this was a resting order. This is that 360 that we had trouble breaking through. But let's be real about it. Just because I scalped some out doesn't mean that level's going to hold, okay? That level could absolutely quadunk. And uh, what I see right now is the market coming back up. So I'm going to have to end my T triple Q trade there as it does take that level and also TSLL possibly on the way up here, Daryl, 149.50. We broke through VWAP on a closing basis. That concerns me a little bit. We don't have much left on that TSLL short, but I'm trying to think here, is this a good area to add or is this just Tesla on the way up in the market in general, possibly curling up here. We took that 300 point level, not on a decisive basis. Let's be real about it. We're a few points ahead of it. So this could be a fake out breakout. I mean, if you consider a 17.3 a breakout. In any event, I'm seeing a hammer candle come in on NVIDIA, and that typically concerns me if I'm short the market, because NVIDIA has been d dominating the uh, NQ's price action as of late. We've talked about this overlap, sorry, excuse me, the overlap between their charts has been, you know, very clear as of late. Anyway, so I am very close to ending my TSLL trade as now Tesla 149.60, it's decisively above the volume weighted average price, which on my chart is 149 and a quarter. So we're about um, well over 25 pennies going to 35 some odd pennies there on TSLL. Adara, uh, I'm gonna send it to you because I'm probably gonna have to bail on this short. Yeah, you're gonna have to run out of the cyber truck. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully, hopefully Maybe I'll get into the cyber truck first and foremost. Let's get into the cyber truck. Yeah. Then we'll talk about getting out of the cyber truck. That's true. That's true. That's true. Also, like I said, I, I feel weird calling Tesla a cyber truck. I think it's more of a model too, like the discount model that, <laughs> that Elon was talking about there. But yeah, I mean Elon, this Elon. this Nvidia <laughs> Elon. <laughs> but this yeah, this NVDL trade, this is like, you know, I think sometimes I always say this the first couple of times a, a day that I trade Nvidia, I like to think that I am comfortable not scalping it. Uh, but it's like I am always more comfy in my Nvidia trades or NVDL when I am being scalpy. So I'm happy with this. This is just kind of, I think, some confirmation. I do want to be scalping a little bit more, be more comfortable with that. AMC is the place to be. Shout out to these apes. They're swinging from vine to vine here on the upside for AMC. As you can see, I've drawn some lines here. There are levels I like, but we're a little right now, a little bit too chop and churn for me to really feel the, the urge to get in there. I don't have a lot of drive to enter this trade right now. NVDL, though, I, I might get back in as a, a little long scalp. And again, when I every time I talk about NVIDIA, I'm, I'm basically talking about scalping because I do not like to overstay my welcome in any trade, much less NVDL. I want, this is what I mean by small cap gappers around for a They're good so time, nice. not a long time. They are outie as soon as they were any. if that makes any sense. Look at this, bro. I mean, it touches the high and then it dips right back down, blowing through all the support levels like they don't even matter. Like, I mean, and I'm happy I got out here and I had a resting order to get out in front of 90, owing to the fact that we had topping fill candles through 90, knowing that there was likely a seller on the other side of 90. And look what happens. We get the fill and it absolutely quadunks to the downside. There we go, 40 pennies on a $3 name in one one minute candle. And we haven't seen the end of that. We could see three very shortly here. Let me give you the, uh, the deets on TWG real quick. The float, I believe we see here is 29 million shares, which is small. It's not minuscule like some of these Chinese ADRs that we trade uh, under a million share float. Sometimes we see 400,000, so it's not that, but 25 still, 29, excuse me, relatively speaking, is small. Um, and this is what causes the volatility with these small cap gappers, or one of the reasons, the main reasons. 
Uh, so anyway, out of TWG, profitable, happy on this one, waited at a level of res uh, support that I liked, wet the beak, and uh, we're gone Zeno. Now, let's look at this TSLL trade, because this is the last one we have. We're a penny out of the money on this TSLL trade, which is okay, we're, long, we're short 73s, it's printing 74s. I looked over to the Katina man, I'm like, what do you think about Tesla? So the Katina man is short Tesla now. The Katina men took the short at 149 and three quarters or thereabouts, and so that's 50 plenty plus in the money as it comes right back down into the volume weighted average price. We'll see if this one can come into near lows. I mean, 149, we're probably gonna have to defend that. Anyway, break even again on right now on TSLL, but for how long do we get a VWAP hold? Now we broke VWAP to the high side. We use it now as support. Questions to be asked. I need, if you ask me personally, it's such a red day that um, I just feel like any pops are dead cat bounces, but that's just my opinion. The other thing that I want to talk about, look how many times Apple has rejected the volume weighted average price. This is an Adara Panera range trade over here, and I don't mean to influence you at all, but this is, you know, you know what I call it that, right? Yeah. We have VWAP to the high side, uh, generally at that 165 and a third, 165 and a quarter. And the, we, this is the trade that we had on Apple on that VWAP rejection, and this was an ugly looking topping tail candle. But look what followed a beautiful looking green candle. And then we've been kind of doing nothing, ranging between the 169, let's call it 165 low, and 165 and a third, 165 and a quarter high, give or take that area. So Apple ranging, but what's telling here is it's still below the volume weighted average price, hasn't been able to reclaim it in the way that TSLA just did. So we'll keep eyes on that as well. Also, Softy, we've been talking about that 400 on Softy. It is holding up as a level of support, despite the fact that we had one, two, three, four green candles in a row, and then we had you know, one intervening candle over here that's red, followed by three more green candles. But we're still at that 140, and we can't take it on any decisive basis. So that 400, Previous support now acting as resistance and has been for the better part of ha half an hour right now on MSFT. Keep your eye on that 400. It could be another rinse and repeat. I likely won't trade it because it's just too expensive and I could get in trouble with it, but keep your eye on that. David Marcus, welcome to Trader TV. Thanks for joining. Um, I hope uh, this is, I don't know if this is the beginning of your tr trading journey or your professional or an already established trader and just found us, but we're on every day from 8.30 to 4.30, every trading day, baby, um, with, without exception, literally. Keep an eye on that. All right, let's see what people are talking about. Julia C. is saying Meta. Meta's doing things. Let's have a look at Meta for Julia. Not one that we've traded on the day, not one that I've traded on the day anyway, and Adara's shaking her head. She hasn't traded it either. Um, I gotta tell you, Julia, I see the same thing here on Meta that I saw on Softy, which is a previous area of support, at least initially, from around 10.20 till around 12, and then it's coming right back into that same area that it broke down from, and it's gonna use it as a resistance. So look at this area here, uh, Julia, look at this chart, and then look at this one. Some similarities, they're not identical, and Meta hasn't retraced back into that key area of support, but it's on its way. So I would personally look to get short at resistance level, sorry, uh, support level two on pivots, which on my chart is just a little bit below 487. And I know that's kind of a random area to want to take a short on meta, but that's what the price action is telling me. It's telling me 487 or thereabouts was a level of support and was for a while until it gave up the ghost. So I'm looking for a possible rejection off that level. Now, Julie, if that level doesn't hold, the next level you can be looking at here is this 489 and a quarter. That's where VWAP is. And Meta has been trading below VWAP the entire day. Now, I want to mention one thing, though, about Meta. That the all the 20 period and the 10 period EMAs, which are the yellow and green lines on my chart, they were pointing down from the bell onwards. They have since changed their tune. The 10 EMA is now pointing upwards. And if I can say so, the yellow, which is the 20, is also marginally pointing upwards, looks more horizontal than pointing up. Well, why does that matter? Well, that's one of the things we look at as technical traders, which way the moving averages are pointing, especially 
if they've been pointing one way for a prolonged period of time. It's something that we need to take note of. So the 10 EMA on Meta curling up a little bit here, and anybody who's been watching Meta the last little while knows it's been outperforming the market. It has been strong. And then Zucky got on, uh, on Instagram yesterday, and he was touting his new llama. He's saying it's better than ChatGPT. Not as good as GPT-4, but he's saying it's as good as a free GPT. So, you know, that's not nothing. Yeah, free PT. But yeah, um, yeah, no, I, I don't think it'll be, we'll have to see if it's a llama llama red pajama or a llama llama green pajama day for Meta and the market. Shout out to a children's story Very for short, some reason. Um, but yeah, this is this Meta is a nice, a nice look here. Um, and it's, yeah, it's one that I don't trade. It's one that I also stopped trading a little bit even when I was in the sim because the spread on this can be a lot. Like I used to call it spread us sometimes because we'd be like 30 penny, 25 penny spread. Right now we're kind of oscillating between 20 and 30 penny spread. So be aware of the spread -a on meta. Also, I do want to mention here for someone, I forget who it was in the chat here mentioning Mara. Can we look at Mara when it's near high of day here? And yes, of course we can. Um, sorry, I cannot uh, find your name here, but but yeah, Mara looking really nice here. I drew this line because to me, I'll be very curious to see what we do here at 1640. That was a little bit of a, a resistance area earlier. If we come back, test it and bounce, that'll be really nice. It also comes into almost perfect confluence with that 9 EMA. I don't know if this is the trade that I will necessarily take because I find it, uh, I usually like to look at Bitcoin when I'm trading Mara, but they don't always work in perfect tandem. So we'll see, but it's certainly one I'm going to be keeping my eye on. The biggest level here for me is going to be that uh, the 1640, especially if, you know, Neil says, when in doubt, zoom out. Look at this area earlier. We had this happen before when resistance became clear support. Bang. Look at this at 16. Resistance, whoop down, all the way up. Look where we fall and rest, 16. I like this. I sorry, I'm getting really aggressive here, but I love charts. I'm very passionate about charts. And I love the top of the 16 coming to rest at 16, coming back into this area like Mara. Come yeah, on. Ram Ram, this is not an area or a job to make fun of people who like charts, Ram Ram, because there's a lot of people who like charts around here. <laughs> <laughs> Ram Ram was laughing because Adara said she liked charts, but I, I mean, it's it. a trading floor. I think everybody yeah. likes charts. Well, I don't know if everybody like, but you know, that's my guess. Guys, <sighs> the Katina man is 70 plus pennies in the money. He took that 149.55 short on TSLA and it is headed down, guys. It's just broken down again below VWAP here, broken down below 149. Let's see if it's able to hold that 149 level. I'm not gonna cover anything here, but let me also tell you about this one. Nvidia on the way down again. It's awfully close to the low of day that we printed earlier, 80208. It just came into that 803 and a third, trying to bounce above 804 again. But NVIDIA possibly here, I don't want to say double bottom because that would imply going long, and I'm just not long inclined today. Uh, in any event, these areas of resistance earlier uh, or support earlier are absolutely acting as an area of resistance, whether it's on Meta, whether it's on Microsoft, or even here on AR and NVDA. Because look, look at this 80208 retracement. We make it all the way up into 814 and change. Well, what is that 814? Well, it's the low over here. So it's absolutely being held up. Let's see exactly what we get on the day with some of these names. But I gotta tell you, I'm seeing more green candles here on the market. There's just no, no doubt about that, but they look like dead cat bounces, but who knows? Who knows exactly what we get over here? Yeah, so Steve Mallow asking, who's the Katina man? Sean is the Katina man. Oh, yeah. You can see him and his hat and his uh, outfit and all his trades coming up here very soon. There he is. Shout out to what is that NHL All-Stars 2024. It's a nice hat. So like that when he looked up, it like covered it. his eyes. It was pretty good. But yeah, so so um, shout out to Sean. That is the Katina man <laughs> for me. And is having a good time. Yeah. Friday, I love it. But yeah, no, I I think it was the way that I, I aggressively said I like charts, which is why Ramin was laughing there. I like but charts. I do love charts. I find math really cool. I like turtles, charts. so it's all good. Pardon? What? I said I like turtles. You oh. never seen that video? No. What? I like turtles. No. Never seen it. Ram Ram, can you do your thing? All right. Oh, kid. that's why you were laughing. You don't, oh, yeah, Neil knows what I'm talking about. Okay, Ram Ram's on it. Or, or are you? Let me get on it, Ram Ram. I'll send it to you. I'll send it to you. Don't worry about it. Don't worry yeah. about it. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm going to look here. I like Matthew Booth saying charts, but it's it's hearts with a C in front of it. So it's like we like charts. I, I like that. <laughs> also, I see what you mean about the pseudo double bottom on NVIDIA, but you know what I'm looking at is 
because we know I like ranges in previous areas. What I'm looking at here is not gonna be the long, it's gonna be what we do here at this little base. It comes out about 807 on NVDA. It's gonna be about, um, what is it? What's the exact, it's gonna be about 3260, 3250 here on NVDL. This was a huge little bounce area that I was having quite a good time micro ranging earlier. So let's see if we get some other opportunities. I wanna see as we come into this 807 area, this could get a little bit spicy for me for NVDA and NVDL. Also a trade I didn't really talk about. <laughs> I have this little Ibit scalp and I have to say, I am pretty proud. I feel like one thing that I've noticed that's a little bit different since I've gone live, A, there's been way less fat fingers, which I have to say I'm pretty proud Interesting. of. Interesting. But B, I think my scalp senses have gotten better because real money's on the line, I will be scalpier. I was really happy. I noticed initially I wanted like 69s because what's life without whimsy and also that was basically the top of this little uh, triangle area. Um, but also I noticed I was like Adara was struggling with the 69 area. You might just take 66 and be happy, right? Took 66s because I noticed we we're having a little bit of a struggle and I get out at the top of this candle to the downside and I would have gotten out because it would have broken below 55s. I was risking about five pennies, right? So I think I have to say, I, I think Trying to figure out what trader you are and honing into that is I think really key. So if you're someone who is a, a, a hodl or like hold on for dear life type of trader, figure out how to do that. For me, as someone who's a range scalper, I think my instincts and in being able to read the the book and the chart are really important. So I'm happy I've been able to hone in on that in some way. Fair enough. It's my little spiel. <laughs> Ram Ram, are we ready? Okay, Ram, oh, okay. Well, let me know when you're ready. Oh, no? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I wanna mention that, uh, Oh no, I was looking at the wrong one there. I thought SMCI was up off the bottoms, but it's not, okay. So that's not what I was gonna talk about. All right, let's have a look at, yeah, okay, play it. No, but we need the audio, Ram Ram. Oh, but then we're not gonna be able to, the whole point is, she asks him like, are you having a good time? And he just mentioned, says, I like turtles. His hair is amazing. Yeah, yeah, and she's like, what, what's going on? I didn't know that we, yeah, that's super old, bro. That's super old. I mean, that's maybe why um, some people forgot about it because it's super old. Um, all right, uh, now that we've uh, officially digressed from trading, let's get right back into it. And um, let's have a look at what these small caps are doing because we were involved in this TWG earlier. So this one actually ended up holding three, three bucks. Came into that 310, now coming into that three and a third. That key resistance level though, this could be an interesting short here. If you're able to secure shorts on TWG, looks like it's on the way down. It's trying to fight above the volume weighted average price. I personally wait until it broke below three and VWAP before I ended up getting short on that. But keep your eye on that. Darwin, Jonathan rep reprised the role again. What does that mean, Darwin? For a TN MT promo. Oh, I guess he used the I Like Turtles for a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles promo. That's what oh, I'm getting. Oh, no way. Okay, interesting. I didn't know actually that they did that, but yeah, I mean, it would be really appropriate, right? <laughs> like, I mean, obviously. Uh, but yeah, that's neither here nor there. Uh, what's our TSLL trade doing? All right, we're uh, a penny in the money on this, so waiting for that eventual or that. I'm waiting for a decided. VWAP rejection on TSLA, it's not forthcoming at the moment. We're also curling down below 17.3. And uh, NVIDIA is right back into the lows again. Here it is, 803 is about to break, or so it looks. 802.08, that's a low of day on NVDA. In case you wanna play, whatever way, 800, long or short, there is NVDL, NVDS, NVDX, you needn't take NVDA if you don't want to risk uh, $800 a share and or you know it's just too spready for you so you want something a little bit tighter. The other ones are, uh, are equally as valid. So keep that in mind as well. All right, I don't have too much on at the moment. I don't know what you're looking at. What have you been looking at, Adara? Yeah, can I say one thing I'm noticing here too, and take this for what you will. I talk a lot about my little levels that are interesting. Uh, maybe of interest to me and only me, but I wanna mention this one on NVIDIA because it's, kind of, it's kind of interesting. So look at this. We had this big move down here, then we kind of have this bottom and top a couple times. At On, on NVDA, it's gonna be about 804.75, right? Look where we came up to, closed that on, a, on a, this green candle and then rejected from. That's right. This level, this 804.75 is coming in again. If you're looking at a NVDL, look at, look at this. 
Look at this little level. Yeah. Oh, that's very interesting. Coming right in here. again yes, at these, yes. these 40s. I want to watch this reject a couple times because I tried to take this short earlier and it did not work out for me because I was a little bit too overzealous and I didn't watch and wait enough. I wasn't patient enough. I watched, I watched like it reject once and decided that was enough I needed. Like, oh, come on, and the water's fine. No, I want to see more rejections this time. And that being said, this was like, we, we managed the trade. It's, it's all good here. I just want, but you know, it, it would have been better had it just actually, I was a little bit more patient for it. So that's the take looking there. Solo Chris was saying the Cybertruck is holding on. Yeah, I know. I uh, showed it to, I think, both Sean and I know Sharif is short the Cybertruck mm -hmm. there. Um, but yeah, TSLA definitely kind of chopping and turning here at this 9 yeah. EMA, doing its thing 21. But yeah, shout out to Sharif there. It looks like Tesla might be best all for you today. It, it's okay. You know, hopefully we'll do a little bit better on it. That's the, uh, the desire there, there. But let me also tell you guys about MNDR. Uh, remember this one, Mobile Health Network Solutions, IPO from a couple of weeks ago, Ram Ram. And this one is doing things yet again, 43% here. And, you know, it's not trading a lot of volume for a $29 name, six and a third million shares, which is not bad. But, I mean, you could tell how sparsely traded it is just looking at the, the candles. And, you know, they have a way of showing you that the volume is light. Anyway, so this one's making a move into 30. I personally would look for something short here uh, at the even dollar level, especially if it's a $10 level. I don't know exactly how to get into this. I got to tell you the truth. It doesn't seem like, oh, well, hold on. So 28 was an interesting level. It was initially rejected. Then it was used as support. So could 29 do the same thing 28 does? I mean, I don't know. I don't know about this one. MNDR, big though. Anybody who's interested in trading small cap stocks, I just wanted to let you know this was moving. And in case you're wondering, it's either a 15.8 million share float or a 12 million share. I have two uh, conflicting data points here on MNDR. So keep your eyes on that one if you are small cap inclined. All right, so... We did break below 149 momentarily there on Tesla, but right back above 149 we go. We are now holding VWAP from the south side, so that is good if you're short, but we're not getting the break of the levels with that earlier aggression, definitely. So it looks like the selling slowed down a little bit here. Okay, and then here comes NVDA back. Okay, so now new low of day on NVIDIA, $802 exactly is a low of day. Prior to that, it was 80208. Now, we have an eight, a, a even level uh, hold there, but I think that the better level is gonna be that 800, and there it is, 80160 now, a sh uh, low of day on NVDA. Good? Yeah, no, I was just like, it's just crazy move. I'm yeah. not even in it. I'm just like looking I thought at you were I was, I was Breathing too aggressively. I'm not in anything, and I'm, I'm I, yeah, I'm a little aggressive okay. there. That's oh, all good. Uh, yeah, so new low day there, 801 and a quarter. Um, and I want to mention what this orange line is, if it looks orange on your screen. Um, this is re support level two on pivots, and this level has been being respected. So the fact of the matter is, there's probably not a whole lot of reasons why we should be holding up at 802 on NVIDIA other than to say the pivots are there. So that's why I have them up, because sometimes they're important, sometimes they mean nothing. And it's incumbent upon you to figure out whether the technical indicator you're looking on, looking at that day is relevant or irrelevant. And that's kind of, I guess, part of the, uh, the things that you gotta learn about trading, right? That's kind of how it is there. All right, uh, Meg, seven names, we've uh, labored them to death. Let me cover Mara, cause Mara's doing things today. It was up 10% at the high, and we didn't even get BPI to give us his uh, take on MARAs either. Yeah. Patty, any, uh, any uh, takes on Mara today, my man? 1450 to 17 range, the same range he mentioned to us yesterday, correct? Yep. Okay, so it's still within that range and it's still within the, the same playable area that big Patty Ice told us, hey, look at that, look at that zoom, baby. <laughs> ram, ram. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, Mara is having a good day and that's likely to do with the fact that crypto is back up well above 60,000, 64,000 and a third is crypto. Uh, look. I don't know. How do you get in on Mara here? I mean, I, I haven't watched it enough to be able to answer this intelligently. But just to point out to you guys, Mara's moving up. Okay, it's a, it's a good day. It was over 10%. Uh, what are other people talking about? I saw some people throw up some tickers there earlier. 
Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, one second here, because I did see it with something. Mara, 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 and then MNDR. Okay, so I already mentioned MNDR, which is fine. I just wanted to point that out. I'm not going to trade. Uh, I'm not going to trade MNDR. It's just too lightly traded, and it's not for me. Yeah, I, yeah. I, mean, I also I had a level on Mara that I liked Eek. earlier, so I'm going to pull it up and see if it's still. So we're actually kind of at it. I found this level here was interesting earlier, that resistance at 1645. We're kind of chopping and turning around it now. So we did have a little bit of an area. This is interesting to me, though, the fact that we cannot eclipse that earlier top, especially with the bounce. I think we're seeing clear support at 1650, but honestly, this might be more of a range. And you know what that means. Someone like me might want to get involved. I'm in NVDL right now. I, I was, like I said, I like these, these kind of bottom of the candles waiting for rejection. We had a little bit. I might have been a little too overzealous here. I'm going to give this until about um, kind of the top of this candle here, so 35s. I would rather not give it that much. If we kind of get really dicey at 30s, I'll get out. Um, and the plan is to kind of get, again, back to the bottom of this range here, scalp where necessary, as always. But this Mara is going to have like to take a place in my side chart. Also, AMC. Congrats to all the apes here in the chat. I keep trying to join. I'm just going to get out of my NVDL quickly. I keep trying to join the AMC party, and it, like AMC does not want me to be there. Let me tell you, look at this. I keep, I have my little beak waters ready. AMC bounces near them and is like, actually, I'm good, thanks. And then does not get involved. So thanks, AMC. Good times. I know when I'm not wanted. No, I'm joking. But AMC, I'm definitely moving without me. That is for darn sure. Uh, nice look on this one. Let's see if it makes a new high of day. BTC testing high, says Manuel Palma. Yeah, let's take a look at IBIT. Right. Which I, yeah, like I said, I was a bit involved in IBIT earlier. So we did, yeah, we did take a bit of an L in that um, NVDA. If it does, I guess we took an NVDL and NVDL. <laughs> um, but yeah, ooh, this IBIT popped to the upside here earlier. I mean, yeah, we, I, I want to see, though, what we do at 90s. Because look, this was a huge resistance area. And it looks like we already kind of rejected it. Mm, this might, this is not really my type of trade. But if we have another test of 90s and we fail, I might get involved. Also, NVDL. I should, have, I should have stayed involved here. We didn't have that vicious pop. I guess I got a little bit nervous, wanted to make sure I was covering other stocks and got out. This could be a re-entry point here just because I think this isn't a case. And someone was saying this once, and I think it's a good point. If, don't get back in, into a stock if you get stopped out. And I think that's a fair point, but I think sometimes if the issue is where you put your stop, which I think was the case for me, then I think maybe that's a little bit different. And I think it's something I kind of want to decide for myself. Um, and maybe I should have even been waiting to short it there, right? But I think, you know, NVDL, this has been my best name of the day. Pretty, pretty happy with how it went so far. And if we keep kind of seeing this move down, I might have to take another scalp short here because I think the biggest issue here for me was the timing of my entry and the placement of my stop. Uh, Vulcan, yeah, I think what's happening with this market has just been a lot of uncertainty amidst some more hawkish Fed speak. We did have Goolsby saying today that um, oh. a very, in a very roundabout way that there could be the possibility of a rate hike, but that's not how he said it. The way he said it was very hyper-specific, so let me pull up the exact wording. It was a double negative. I remember that for was sure. It? He said, um, oh my gosh, let me find this. It was at 10, around 10.50. Um, don't think anything is not on the table. So that means it could be on the table of rate hikes. So, because uh, yeah, because that someone asked him, "Will you hike race?" and he said, "Don't think anything is not on the table." Ah. So that you know that was a little bit more hawkish. We did have Feds Powell in his uh, little chat there with with uh, Bank of Canada Governor Tiff Macklem, in which they talked about Canadian comedians and. Tiff Macklin brought a $10 bill from Canada for some reason, so <laughs> it was a definitely really interesting conversation. I would recommend checking out. You can watch it on YouTube. Why was he but doing anyways, that? But anyways, it was so weird, right? And in Brendo that, said they were talking about hockey and stuff were? too, like which I, I find to be interesting. And like um, neither of them is a hockey fan, which I found to be even more interesting. Uh, so whatever. Um, all right, um, long AMD um, for 149 defend. I was just talking to the Katina man there. And uh, we were both, he said that the better look here is on AMD. Uh, and I happen to absolutely agree with him. So we wet our beak already there on that little move up. I actually had a much, much better price on AMD, uh, but uh, I fat fingered that problem. So that's my problem. I knew, anyway, I'm looking for about uh, maybe into the 50 penny area, 149 and a half. We'll see if we can make it up there on AMD. But I'm gonna, I gotta tell you, I'm feeling less and less happy with this Tesla short. So I am Gonzino uh, out of that. We'll take that break even on that, on that move. And I'm going to focus this trade now on this curl up here on AMD. And we'll see also if uh, NVDA is moving up. It just knocked on the door of 805 and the door opened. 
So uh, we'll see if it can make its way up into that previous crest, excuse me, crest up there. That took us into that 814 territory on NVDA. But, you know, alas, it has been lower highs and lower lows. So if you're going to be in these longs, just be careful and, you know, take the profits when, uh, when you can get them because you just don't know when the market's going to turn around on you. So long and um, at 149.14, looking for a move up into around 149.50 or thereabouts. Let's see what happens. I already put my stop through the break of that key trough area over here. So if it makes a new low, that's it. If it makes I a new low, I can keep going because you were talking for a while. Oh, yeah, thank um, you. Give me a second here. Uh, right. Let me just see what else. Uh, shout out to James Dell. I saw you tagging me earlier, my man. What were you looking at? Let me know. Uh, I think you were talking about the future, James. If uh, Correct me if I'm wrong. I could be wrong on that. Um, oh, NVIDIA just made another nice move down there right into 802. So nice rejection of the 10 period EMA. And we're also below 17.3. So keep that in mind. Now, I got to tell you, though, what looks like it's changing the direction of things right now is not NVIDIA and it's not AMD. Microsoft is well above 400. It's back into the 50. I, cut, I see Google now breaking up as well below this 154 area. It's in that 154 and a third. It broke above the 50. So keep your eyes on some of these, uh, you know, these Mag7 names. They, not all of them, some of them are curling. Even META, almost $10 off the low now is Meta as it breaks through 485. It's on its way into 486, it looks like. Softy is about to break the 50 and head into that 401 area. Um, you know, the dead one is the dead one on the day. It goes by the taker AAPL. It's been awfully consolidative below 165 or, you know, just below 165 to that 165 and a quarter. So we'll keep eyes on this, but some of these Meg 7 names are definitely curling up here. Tesla not included in that. There goes AMD into the 40s. So if we can get a little bit higher here on my friend AMD, I will hit the flatten button and take that 40 penny winner. We'll see what we get here on AMD Dara. Congrats to you. I like that, um, that fist pump I saw there earlier. Um, yeah, shout out to that. Also this NVDL, I was saying this in the chat, these micro ranges have been beautiful and my timing has just not been the best. Uh, we had that rejection of 40s, which was certainly an area here for NVDL earlier. And I was a little bit late on it. I wasn't you know, quick enough on my feet. Then we had that pop up back off the 20 area, which again, I was just not quick enough on. So I think, you know, we have this rejection again. Adara, get yourself involved. There we go. So we're getting involved here. We're gonna we're we're gonna try to take twenties. Like honestly, this is this is super super scalpy, um, because I, I just want kind of this look. I like if we break above forties and maybe I'm a little bit too late to this, then we'll have to be getting out. But I, I'm just really trying to take this scalp for what it is. This range was nice earlier. I hope this isn't a FOMO type situation, but I have noticed we're having a really hard time with this level, and it was a level earlier. So I just want to be able to take whatever pennies I may take and let the chips fall. Uh, in this case, where they may. And congrats to uh, Sharif again for getting out of that AMD. Um, Thomas Johnson asking about a one minute cup and handle on the spy. So let's find out there. Let's spy what's on the spy. SPY. SPY not. No, I'm joking. <laughs> but okay, uh, this is, yeah, this is an interesting look here. We're going to have to wait and see what we do. But the spy, okay. Okay, let me zoom out. There we go. Okay. So I don't know if I, I don't know if uh, the cup and I see what you mean. We have this kind of rounded. This is not super rounded though. To be, it's a little bit more of like a, a vase and handle. I don't know. And then we kind of come back up here. I think breaking above VWAP is going to be super key. And I think in terms of levels, I want to see what we do here around that 498, 10 and 20 area. That was a little bit of a, a base and then an area of um, kind of resistance and support. I'm seeing a couple times here around that on the one minute. Also, we got out of NVDL, so I'm really happy with that. Please just punch. Um, I always feel good after I make a scalp trade. I don't know. Nice. It, it's kind of fun. It's like a weird little adrenaline rush, but yeah. good. Uh, go markets. But yeah, so this 498, I really want to see what we do here because that to me is definitely an area we chopped and churned around. We're getting near that VWAP. I think this could be an interesting level. The point I'm trying to make is I do think, to sum it up, I'm not sure if I totally see the cup and handle, but I see what you mean in terms of we have higher highs, higher lows, but be aware of this key resistance and VWAP are coming into confluence. Oh, okay.
Oh, there we go. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. I'm short Apple at these levels. Call me crazy, but the market just went above 17.3 again. But there's this level that we haven't cleared yet. It's that 17.315. We're there right now. I'm gonna, Apple's right back at the volume weighted average price. It's been rejecting VWAP uh, essentially since 12.50. So if it ends up holding here, it ends up holding, that's fantastic. Oh, the market's on the way up. Okay, so the market just went into the 50 period moving average on the five, 17,318. I mean, we haven't decisively broken 300 with the vigor, but fact of the matter is, you have to be aware of it. We are above 17.3 when we're below, we've been below 17.3 the entire morning. So where's my out on Apple? Let's figure this out. So we're short 19s. Uh, we haven't been anywhere above 30s since 11.15 this morning. So if we get above 30, I, I got to cut it right there. That could be bamboozlement, but yeah, that's part of trading. Bamboozlement is included in the package. So, uh, you know, need not, uh, you need not seek bamboozlement elsewhere. It comes included, baby. All right, so Apple at the 50 period, uh, sorry, at the volume weighted average price, my look here is a break above 30. I might give it a couple of shekels above 30. Let's just say that. Um, if it breaks it decisively, I'm gone. I'm looking for a rejection of the volume weighted average price on Apple. Oh, here comes 30. So this is probably gonna have to be my line in the sand as the fuge on the way up here, 17.325 and recovering. The market looks like it might be on the way up here, Adara. Yeah, I mean, I, I took this yeah. IBIT short because we kind of came into that resistance level. We struggled, then the market got a little bit of pop, as did IBIT. I'm only risking five pennies in this. If we get to 95s, I am out. And I say 95s because that was that area earlier. Uh, here we are, this little chop and turn. But yeah, so for me, why I like 90s in the first place. We had this, uh, look at where we had here, this little uh, support earlier, then massive resistance coinciding with VWAP, right? Then we come back into it. We had a little bit of rejection. So, I mean, if I could take, honestly, I'd be pleased as sponge if I could take 10 pennies. I want to see what we do at 80s and wait, but I'm happy. Weighty at 80s, I don't know. But we'll um, we'll kind of wait and see here what happens. I'm happy that I had, you know, the, the confidence to take this trade a little bit. And what's interesting to us, I said this in the chat, a little bit of uh, some twinning happening here with IBIT and SPY looking very similar. SPY bit? I don't know. Because, like, honestly, so we have the SPY, SPY chart here, which had a little, little bit different, but we did have that, you know, kind of area of support and resistance coming in. I would say SPY by breaking above its previous resistance, maybe better than IBIT a little bit here. Um, I gotta put IBIT on my side chart so I can see what that's happening there. But yeah, I think, um, I think honestly, one of the big things too I've noticed trading live is I think you, A, I think it makes me a bit more cautious, which I think is a good thing, but also I think when I see something I like, I'm even more inclined to take it, which I also think is a good thing. So I'm happy with that. That being said though, by bit, I did not like that break above, so we got out. Um, it's okay, it's all good. Um, happy I got it where I did there. Should have probably had that a little bit tighter, about 95s. But we had that break above with the viciousness, so I decided I wanted to leave. Could have probably scalped out a couple pennies there earlier. Would have, could have, should have. Uh, good times there. Um, phony Boney saying American Express is absolutely crushing. No way. So let's take a look there at AXP and the place to be. Um, yeah, this is a nice look. It's a really nice look here. A little bit of a range earlier, this 224 bottom. And then we break to the upside again. We, lots of ranges on the way here for AXP. Then continuing to break above. Um, high of day right now, 203.45. And it looks like AXP is about to break it, knocking on the door. What a market. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, Adara, we are right back at that 17.350 level that we were talking about earlier. This is the bottom end of the earlier support level. This is pivot support level two. So interesting look here on the future. Do we continue up or do we uh, head back down? I'm gonna say we head back down. I'm taking the short on the T triple Qs. I just don't believe in this market. Let's see if we can make it down, down, go down. Let's go. Um, yeah, we, we moved up aggressively there, but we are at an interesting area of resistance. So I'm gonna try my hand here. Got uh, shafted on that Apple short, but that's fine. Uh, we've been trading Apple all day long. And there goes the Fuge right back down. So we cover a little bit there. Let's see if we can make it down back into 17.3. Um, but we did come into that 17.350 level, which was, again, I just want to mention this orange level over here, which we kept bouncing off earlier on. Now we kind of make it our way up there. And at least initially we're rejecting off. I'm not saying that this is, you know, the down move where we break below 17.2 again, but I'm just telling you that there was a scalp trade to be had 
off this level owing to the area of support that we had. And then actually we used it as resistance. So when we broke down below it at 11.15, look at all these candles here, trying to reclaim that level as resistance. And down we go again. So nicely in the money right now, 20 pennies or so, in the money on this T-triple-Q short. Let it go, baby. Come into 17.3. Come to daddy, baby. Let's go. Ooh. And we're going to cover that nice off that level. It was a rinse and repeat. We mentioned this level. Shout out to the Katina man. Oh, thank you, Katina man. I appreciate you, dog. I appreciate you. The Katina man shouting me out. I appreciate him. Uh, and down goes the future of 17.350. And down it goes below 50. Wow, that was a quick... 70 points, a firm is on the way down. Shout out to the Katina man there. Big trades, when there's only like three minutes left on the show. That's crazy, yeah, congrats to you. I was trying to get involved, and this is the thing too, I need to remind, if I like a range, stick with that range. This NVDL did not leave this area. I was waxing poetic about it, 3240. That's what I should have been taking. Should have continued to short off that range. Instead, I took a failed trade off I bit. But you know what, that's okay. I'm still positive on the day. I'm really happy to say it. I'm proud that I tried to take this I bit trade even though it didn't work out because I do need to practice, you know, if you like something, and I did have a reason to like it. We had this continued resistance and initial Initially, we did give up about five pennies. Should have scalped out a little bit earlier, but nice look. Congrats to you on that, on that Q short. That's Thank an you. awesome look. Thank you, Adair. Um, appreciate you. Yeah, uh, appreciate Let's you. see what else we got over here. We were oh, talking. Oh, wow. NVIDIA broke 800. I didn't even notice this. Okay, so I completely missed that. Yeah. NVIDIA broke 800 viciously here. Bad. Uh, that was a big drop there. How many? How much volume? We have a million shares on this one five-minute candle, guys. This is an $800 stock that just printed one million shares in one five-minute candle. And I'm assuming that had a lot to do with the tug, and war, tug of war between buyers and sellers at this 800 level. But look at that. We dropped $7 to the T below 800, 793 LOD on NVDA today. That was brutal. It's, it's forming a bit of a hammer candle now, but I wouldn't put too much stock into that break. What a move down for NVIDIA there. And a lot of these MAG7 names that were all curling up, all now putting in a bit of a red candle there. Apple chief among them, and the Katina man showing me exactly why he got short TSLA there. And you know, I didn't have the uh, wherewithal to stay in the the short, excuse me, there on Tesla, and it absolutely quadumped off that 149 and a quarter top at the volume weighted average price to exactly 148.50 in that one minute candle. One minute left, Adara, on the show. That was crazy. Yeah. yeah. One minute candle, one minute left. Yeah, shout out again. Thank you guys for the support there for Sharif's awesome yeah. trade on the TQQQs. Appreciate you guys. Um, yeah, no, no, no cues about it. Oh, um, great <laughs> trade there. Not a question. Um, but also, uh, yeah, what, what? I think this is a really crazy week to go live, honestly, with all of the stuff happening in this I market. I think you did it very well. Thank you very uh, much. Composure, entries, analysis, you did well. Thank you, I appreciate yeah. that. I think I'm, I'm happy I got to start this week too because I think the market certainly gave me a lot. I tried, it, it was easy I think to get lost in the sauce in this market and I'm happy I feel like I mostly was able to keep my little head up above water. But right now, you know, this is actually gonna be the end of our time with you guys, but we will see you next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Right now though, you know where this is going. You're gonna be good at, in a couple seconds here. You shall be headed over to Brendan at the big desk. See you guys. Hey guys, yeah, welcome back in. Uh, a couple hours left in the week here as we get into uh, Friday afternoon.